South Dakota State, the number four seed. And on mat number two, we got Jace Kelzer from Oklahoma. He's versing Evan Frost, which is the two seed from Iowa State and is a tough, tough freshman. He's had a really good season at 15 and three. Kelzer right now is 13 and 10. For Frost, his only loss to a Big 12 wrestler this year was to Dayton Fix. Right. Back on January the 27th, a fantastic debut for the Cyclone, ranked seventh in the national rankings. Yes. He's had, a, he's had a really, really good season, right? He's had a really, really good season, and especially as a redshirt freshman. Um, getting used to this type of, I say daily grind, because that's what, that's what wrestling is. It is a daily, daily grind. Down here on mat number one, Mike, we got a tie score now, seven to seven. Now, there's still riding time, but this is still only in the second period, so a lot of wrestling still to be done, man. Just inching your way. I'm telling you, these, and that's another thing. You asked me this question about the three-point takedown. You're never out of a match, yeah. right? You are never out of a match now. I don't care if you're down by six or seven points in the last period. You get a couple, you know, you get a takedown and a turn, you're winning. Or you get two takedowns and a ride, whatever the case may be. So that three-point takedown, it, uh, you're never out of a match, and you can come back and win. So don't think it's over until that last whistle blows. Meanwhile, Julian Farber just now with a three-point takedown on Matt Three, bottom left corner of your screen. So an 11-3 lead for him late in the second period. You mentioned the riding time for Strickenberger. Owens trying to work that yes. down right now. And he's he's at 115. There's 15 seconds left on the clock. Takes him out of bounds. Good job by Owens kind of understanding where he was at with Strickenberger. Strickenberger was trying to sprawl and circle back in, but uh, Owens did a good job of taking him out and getting a fresh start with 10 seconds left in this second period. He can work that riding time back down under a minute before the end of the second period. Crucial situation right here for Frost. Looking for a fall on mat number two. Ooh. Able to sprawl He's out of it. He went right back to that cradle. <laughs> he, he's hunting that down, man. Kelzer's doing a good job of fighting that, kind of in that hurdle position. 15 seconds left in the period as Kelzer continues to scramble away, but Frost. I got to give Kelzer credit there. That was a good job by him battling out of that, right? Uh, Frost nearly had him pinned. I like the way Frost transitioned and went right back to that cradle. And in all due respect, I like the way Kelzer defended that. Was in that little hurdle stretch position. Was able to attack the top hand and peel it off. But some back points for Frost in a 7-0 lead late in that first period. Meanwhile, an escape from Strickenberger late in the second period. Then another one here to start the third. Flip 7-7 seven, seven to 9-7 in a blink. Think about that, right, Mike? The score was actually 7-7, seven 8-7 seven, seven for Strickenberger. Owens almost had the riding time off. I think there was nothing but maybe 10 seconds left coming back when they yep. went out of bounds. So that's a big game changer right now. Can Owens still win this match? Sure, right? Three-point takedown, you're in the lead. Right. Right? You know, we, we, I've talked about a lot doing some different commentating. The, those last 10 to 15 seconds left of any match can really change, change that match, whether you're, you give up a score or you don't give up a score. In that situation, Owens gave up two escapes, really. Right? Now he's down 9 to 7, and Strickenberger still has 55 seconds of riding time left. They got a, I don't know if they got a blood time or they, oh, okay, I think, I, uh, okay. I saw Coach Flynn, I think the officials are going to review if Strickenberger had three on the side of that mat over there. I think that's what the review is because he did get his arm out. Tuck Owens was sitting on his bottom, but I don't know if he had his hips controlled or not. So we'll kind of see what they're doing there on mat number one. We'll keep you posted there. Derek Lark and Steve Wards to the table to take another look at what would be a very important three points. And let me tell you guys something. Mike Leslie did a heck of a job of getting these officials' name and their <laughs> number of their jersey. So we right, right so down we to the wire <laughs> at about 9.59, too. <laughs> yes. Matter of fact, yep, he is exactly correct on that. But he's got every official name and number so we can, you know, give them their recognition as well. But he is right. He, he, he started walking over here with about one minute left. 
Meanwhile, it's a 7-3 lead uh, for Cardinal in the bottom right corner oh of your screen. Man. Late third period there, Case Mauger trying to make something happen. Cardinal's got the riding time locked, though. Let's see here. Case Mauger with an uphill climb in that bottom right corner of your screen. I'll beg your pardon, riding time not locked, and Mauger able to work it back down under a minute here. But Cardinal with an escape and an 8-3 lead yeah. in good shape. It's kind of on, I would say, easy street, but he seems like he's got this match under control. Still reviewing down there on mat number one. Top right corner on mat two. Frost with a 7-0 lead. His riding time is locked. So effectively an 8-0 lead. They will award three points yep. to Strickenberger. That's the situation. That was a good challenge by Coach Flynn. Now, I'm not for sure if he threw the brick or if the officials took that challenge themselves. Sometimes the officials will do that. Um, if, you know, they got a perimeter official and you got a head official. So they'll have a conversation and uh, sometimes they will do the review on their own, but also sometimes that coach has to throw that brick out there. And sometimes the officials will give it back to the coach and say, hey, we're going to review that ourselves. That's on us. So an impressive stretch from Jet Strickenberger, the junior, from late in that second period yes. through the third yep. to take control of what was a 7-7 match. 12-8 now as Owens gets the escape, but a lot of work to be done in this final 52 seconds. You are correct. And we actually got the number one seed right here at 141 pounds on mat three. That is Anthony Echemi India from Iowa State, 16 and four. He is facing Garrett Kuchin from Air Force with the 7-11. Right now, six to one is the score. Well, just an escape right there makes it six to two. Echemendia is active and he is, likes to score points in a hurry. Yep. Strickenberger with the fall down there. Man, how ties turned down there. Woo, man. Complete control from Strickenberger. Yep. Stolen away in that match. Man, good job by him. 125 is done and on to the next round for those young men. 133 pounds, top right corner on Matt Two. Frost and Kelzer an eight nothing lead in the third period. Oh, body lock right here on Matt Three. This is, yeah, man. That's a man deal with another takedown and a nine to two advantage. And hunting back points. Etchmendia has a uh, Greco background. He uh, he won Fargo a few years back in freestyle and Greco. So once he got to that body lock position, you see how he lifted. I think it might have been his left leg. He kind of split the legs, took his opponent to his back with that bear hug. Three takedown, four near fall, 13 to two is the score right here at the end of this first period. And this is what I was talking about with not only three-point takedown, Mike, but the four near fall, right? The two, three, or four near fall in this position. I mean, within a blink of an eye, you got seven points on the board. He's only a couple points away from a tech fall, and the first period's just ended. Anthony Echemendia, 16-4 and four on the year from Cuba. Wrestled in high school at Sunnyside High School, number seven in the national rankings and in complete control after one period in his first round match. Extremely tough, tough, tough young man. Looking ahead, a very likely matchup with Cole Brooks from Wyoming in the next round. Brooks with a first round bye. Nice transition by Echemendia there. Went from the big lift, goes right to that, goes right to the tilt, gonna end up getting that tech fall right there. Four, Four back yep, points, that's it. and that'll do it. 17 to two, Anthony Echemendia in a blink on to the quarterfinals. And a matchup with Cole Brooks yep. later on today. Man, good explosive, good technique. Transitioning from one move to the next. Solid wrestling there by Etchmendia. You saw another look there in that bottom left corner. Top right corner at 133 pounds.
Alex Frost getting ready to move on to the second round, the number two seed. And then just getting started, top left at 133 pounds. Cade Moore and Bubba Wright out of Air Force. A minute left in the first period. Over here on mat number three, we got Tegan Jamison from Oklahoma State. He is the two seed. His record is 18 and six. He is facing Caden Smith from Oklahoma. His record is three and five. These two young men wrestled in Bedlam in December. Jamison had a controlling lead, got banged up during that match, ended up gutting it out. So trying to find a way to continue to move through this tournament. And my apologies out there for any Mustang folks. I said Tucker Owens was from Tuttle. He's actually from Mustang. Okay. Shout out Mike Walkup gave me that information. You got all this information running through your head. Sometimes it kind of gets crumbled up. <laughs> o only 130 wrestlers <laughs> to get to know is it's no big deal. Six to three, Titus with the lead in your bottom right corner on mat four as they approach a minute to half, minute and a half to go in the second period. Titus has had a really good year. I remember him as a red shirt freshman, how he struggled a little bit just with, uh, you know, talking to a lot of these coaches about the daily grind of being a, a wrestler, um, college wrestler for that matter. But now he's to the point to where he's the, you know, he's ranked nationally. He's been as high as nine in the nation. And I mean, I tell you what, he's continued to get better throughout this season. And he's, he's grown as a wrestler. Um, pretty sure he's probably even grown as a young man, too. Taking and that's Jameson, what you want to see. Taking Jamison with an early takedown and a 3 0 lead on that three bottom left corner. You can, if you'd like to, on ESPN Plus, pull up individual feeds of all four of these mats as well. So that is another option for your viewing pleasure. If you'd like to just call up one individual mat and watch your favorite wrestler square off, you see on the bottom of your screen the now next bar telling you what is coming up on each respective mat yep. as we get into 149 pounds here in the not too distant future. Yep. Just moving right along, one after another, right? Smith with the escape makes a score 3 0, or 3 1, sorry. Let's see. Got a little... Trying to see everybody that we got on. Down here on mat number one, got Cade Moore from Missouri and Bubba Wright from Air Force. Cade Moore is the sixth seed at this weight. Very unique style. Um, he's pretty dangerous from all positions. Talking to Coach Brian Smith earlier this week. He was banged up and sick a little bit during the Oklahoma State duel, was unable to compete there, but I'm excited to watch this guy wrestle live. Hadn't had a chance to do that just yet this year. Three more for Tegan Jamison on Matt three and a 6-1 advantage. Got our guy Nick Turner as going out there, let these officials know that when times are up. See these other guys walking on the mat, getting to the official, keep their eye on the clock, right? This is a... Uh, I mean, this is crunch time. This is crucial time for all of these athletes in these buildings. And, you know, these coaches in these corners, like, this is what they're working for, right? That postseason time. I got another reviewer looking at some time on mat number two. Not for sure what they're doing over there. Mat one, two to one, as Wright got the escape there late in the second period. So that's a tight one as they head to the final stanza. Cade Moore out of Allen High School, a powerhouse program down in Texas. Number 22 in the national rankings, the sixth seed. Moore does have a buck 32 of riding time. That's not locked yet, but he's in good shape in that regard. Yep. Green. Caden Smith with the escape there. Makes that score six to two for Jamison. Titus down there on mat number four, getting some swipes. Trying to get himself to a tech fall. 15 to four, the advantage under a minute left. Moore and right, down to a minute left in the third in a 2-1 match. Jamison with another takedown. 
You know, and talking to Coach Smith this morning. with a takedown and yep. now a 5-1 advantage. You know, Mike, and you were on these calls as well, you know, talking to Coach Smith and kind of going through the lineup. That was one of the things he asked or wanted to see from Jamison is, you know, be aggressive, get to his double leg, get to his attacks. Um, pretty much that was kind of the theme for all the coaches that we talked to, really, right? Get to your attacks, wrestle in your positions, wrestle yeah. where you're comfortable at. And three more for Cade Moore, quickly taking control in this third period. And preparing to move on at 133 pounds. Another three-point takedown for Tegan Jamison late in this second period. And what they're, they're, you see Coach Scott and Chris Perry in the corner, they're trying to see if he can get a bottom leg cradle. cradle. Um, Smith did a really good job of crawling forward. When you're in that position and you feel that bottom leg being trapped, you gotta crawl forward a little bit. You wanna try to keep them below the knee if possible. Oh, Jamison went right to a turn. We talked Jordan about Titus moving on. Short time wrestling, right? That score was 12 to 3 with probably, I don't know, four or five seconds left in the period. Mm -hmm. He ends up getting that tilt. Now it's 15 to 3. And a chance for Jamison to add another tech fall to the list for Oklahoma State with a couple points here in this final period. Cade Moore moving on. Three third period takedowns for an 11 3 win in what was a very tight match to start yeah. off the final frame. And he moves on at 141 pounds to the quarterfinals. You know, and one of the, I say, one of the big dogs that is, that are, that's not here at 141 pounds, the returning national champ, Andrea Lirez from Northern Colorado was taking an Olympic red shirt here, trying to represent the United States in the 2024 Paris Games. David Sheamus with the tail fall. Once again, that was one of the things Coach Smith was talking about. Get to your offense, right? They were talking about this guy, those guys' week of, uh, of training and everything. And like I said, it was a common theme from every coach that we had the pleasure of talking to. Our first 149-pound match of the morning. Logan Joffrey of Mizzou, of Mizzou and Benji Alanis out of Northern Colorado in Matt Four, bottom right corner of your screen. And this is one thing that Coach Smith was talking about. Joffrey's been banged up a little bit. Obviously, you see the, the wrap he has on his uh, shoulder out there. So, Meanwhile, on Matt three, another 149-pound match just getting underway. The three seed, Ty Waters and Joe Fernow out of Air Force. Kale Happel just putting the finishing touches on a tech fall on Matt two. 21-6 will be the final in that one at 141 pounds. This Ty Water kid, he's scrappy, man. He, he's got some stuff to him. He's got some stuff to him. Our final 141 pound match of the morning here in this uh, preliminary round. Drury and Drexler on the top left corner of your screen on Matt one. About a minute gone by. Waters is 21 and four on the season. He was ranked nationally at nine. in on that singles, trying to look to get height there. Waters, a true freshman. His only losses this year came against nationally ranked wrestlers. Caleb Henson, Willie McDougald, Casey Swiderski, his only three losses this year. 13 of his 16 wins this year for the freshman Waters were bonus point wins, including nine pins. A tremendous debut yes. for the West Virginia freshman and already a 3-0 lead, 90 seconds in the first period. Good mat return. Mm. Good mat return. Gets adjusted on that tight waist. They go out of bounds. 3-0 to score right now for Waters. The only match on our screen right now with a score. 349-pound matches on your screen. Matt's two, three, and four. Matt won that final 141-pound match. We appreciate everybody out there getting a chance to stream us and listen to Mike and I's, I would say beautiful voice, but I'm not going to go that far, at least for myself. <laughs> Mike, you may take that credit, but I don't think the, I'm going to. The dulcet tones of Hardell Moore. <laughs> 
Watch out. Blessing your Saturday morning. Watch out, man. I'm just trying to bring a little sunshine <laughs> to your life. That's it. Positive vibes only, man. That's how I roll. Water's working that cheap tilt. Oh, man. Man. Had himself in danger yeah, there against Fernow. Nice standing A two-point reversal though. from Fernow. Fernow was close to giving up swipes, end up getting two reversal. Makes that score four to two. That was a lot of uh, action right there in that 10-second spurt. Waters getting the escape for that fourth point of the match. And like I said, watching Waters wrestle, he's extremely good in the scrambles. Alanis and Joffrey, bottom right corner of your screen, Matt, four on to the second period. Yep, 0-0 zero, zero in that match. Same for Drexler and Drury, our final 141-pound match of this early session. Yep. Again, we will have quarterfinal matches here in session one as well, coming up later on this morning. Got a stoppage down here on four. They're looking at something. Reversal for Waters right here on mat number three. Extends his lead. That makes it six to two. About to push riding time over a minute as well with a buck 34 in this second period. Dun, 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 dun. Riding time of over a minute for Drury, top left corner of your screen on mat one. The only thing in the vicinity of points in that match. Still scoreless officially. I did not get a chance to see. Uh, okay, it's, I think it's the clock. That's what it is. The clock is either. I saw him working on the plug on the yeah. bottom side. The, the physical clock itself may not be cooperating. Right. Looks like they got it fixed. That Drury Drexler match winner moves on to face Tegan Jameson in the quarterfinals. The final quarterfinal spot yet to be determined. Echemendia with a tech fall to move on. He'll face Cole Brooks. Clay Carlson had a bye. He'll face Jordan Titus. Meanwhile, bottom half of the bracket, Kale Happel sets up a quarterfinal matchup with Josh Edmond, who had a bye. Yep. And Jamison awaits the winner of Drury and Drexler. 19 seconds in that second period. Drury riding Drexler for this entire second period, up to a buck 41 in riding time. We've got a pretty good match right here on mat number two as well with Alec Martin from South Dakota State. He's the five seed and Dane Morton from Cal Baptist, which came into this tournament unseated. Right now, that scores one to zero for Martin. Riding time's not a factor. Morton was in on the shot, was unable to finish, called the stillmate back up on their feet here at 149 pounds at this Big 12 Conference wrestling tournament. Drury with two minutes of riding time and two minutes on that third period clock as now he'll go on bottom, Drexler going to have to work that riding time down under a minute at the very least. Mm. He's got his work cut out, that's for sure. Drury able to ride Drexler for the entire third period. Oh! Oh, they're going to put him in. Oh! Nothing, nothing. Got a scramble going on down here on four. Alanis and Joffrey. Man, you grab my leg, let me grab yours. Final 30 seconds of this second period. You've talked about the importance of being able to score late in the period. Yep. Who can win this scramble? Joffrey's got a real good grip on that ankle, yeah. That was some good stuff right there. <laughs> he almost had him in danger there. Joffrey almost had Alanis right there in, in danger. Ref hit a count. Was able to scramble back, get to his belly. He got height, and both of them grabbed each other's leg and end up with a stalemate with 10 seconds left in this second period. Drexler and Drury, top left corner of your screen, still officially scoreless. 
Draxler holding on for dear life, trying to avoid giving up the one-point escape that might determine the match. Right. And there it is, the one-point escape for Drury, and now Drexler's got to go get a takedown. And that's big, right? Because now that makes the score officially 2-0. to zero. The, the, His riding time is 111. So he's got to go. Uh, he's got to go hustle and go get a takedown. Waters looking for a fall here. Waters has got Fernow's back, inching closer to that mat. Oh no! Four-point near fall and a 17-3 lead, and that will be the final as that third period winds to a close. 18-3 with the riding time and a tech fall for Ty Waters as he moves on to the quarterfinals. Good match by Waters there. Waters the three seed. He'll face the winner of Allard and Peterson coming up here shortly. 30 seconds left for Drexler to try and make something happen in that final 141 pound match of the morning. Drury the seven seed. That one point escape, all that separates the two of them. Riding time about to lock. And a two nothing lead. Drexler needs a takedown in the final seconds yep. here. That's our only 141 pound match going. Everything else is 49, and we got our first 157 pound match here on mat number three. Matt return to end it. Drury will move on, taking down Drexler in a very tight match. Yes, sir. The seven seed sets up a matchup with Tegan Jamison in the quarterfinals. So we are fully on to 149 and in fact 157 for the first time this morning as the number one seed hits the mat. Vinny Zerbon out of Northern Colorado, 21 and 0 on the year. And I will tell you something about this young man right here on this mat, number three. He is, uh, he's crafty, man. He's got a unique style. And as you watch him wrestle, um, You'll see what I'm talking about. Had a big win at the scuffle, beating uh, Daniel Cardenas from Stanford, and that really catapulted him to, the, to where he's at right now. Number two in the nation, number one seed right here at the Big 12 Conference Championships. Zerbon had a fantastic finish to last year. Finished seventh here at the Big 12 Championships, but made the NCAA tournament as an at-large berth. Won the 32-33 match, the pigtail, but then won three straight matches in the wrestlebacks. <laughs> Lost in the blood round, really strong finish to the year, and he's just turned that into he, now. He, just, it's, he hasn't lost this year. He's he been used fantastic. that as momentum, right? Yeah. He used that and is, uh, you know, putting that into this year. And almost, if you think about it, Mike, we talked about Poolin. Poolin was in the same boat. Got beat out in the blood round. Got beat out, you know, uh, Zerman got beat out in the blood round. So they're using that as motivation. And obviously it's showing for both of them um, during this season. Coach Nickerson has done a really, really good job with this University of Northern Colorado. Had him a national champ last year, like I mentioned earlier, with the Lirez. You got these two guys right here that are nationally ranked at, with Poulin and Zervin. Zervin with the 3-0 lead here, minute 26 in the first period. McDougal and Emmer at 149, top left corner of your screen. McDougal, the two seed out of Oklahoma. Oh, good job. Wow. That was nice there on mat number two. Morton and Mark Morton. That was really, really nice. He was he was very, very close to giving up a three-point takedown. Kept the chest wrap. Now look where he's at. Right? Kept kept the chest wrap. Now he's in potential position to score. Good job by Morton there. Oh. And right now, that score, as you can see on your screen, is one to one. This is uh, this is sub victory. This is the first overtime. So, man, Martin was so close to scoring there. Whew, good stuff. Alec Martin out of South Dakota State, the five seed, 16 and seven on the year, at 149 pounds, but in sudden victory one right now. Dane Morton of Cal Baptist pushing him here to 20 seconds. Oh in this overtime period. 
any score will end this match. Yep, any score will end this, and more than otherwise the they'll go to the tiebreaker. Nothing yet. He couldn't get that shoulder out. He was trying to get that right shoulder out there, but Martin was like, nah, not today, homeboy. We're going to keep this right here. So now they will head to the tiebreaker. Okay, so here's what's happening right here in this 30 seconds. This is where your riding time becomes key uh, for these guys. Uh, Morton's going down. Martin's taking the top position. So obviously Martin's goal is to try to ride this out if he can or get as much riding time as possible. And then they'll flip the script. Or he could, jump, he could go neutral. Who knows? See what happens down here. A little caution going on. Zervin with the 6-0 lead right here starting his second period. Meanwhile, bottom right corner of your screen on Matt Four. A big early lead here for Adam Allard on the sixth seed, Maxwell Peterson. Man, Ten to I, one still yeah. in the first period. And, and getting the count right now. Man. Four more back points forthcoming for Allard and a 14-1 advantage for the UNI Panther. We talked about it, right, Mike? You got to go wrestle these matches. Got to go wrestle these matches. Finally ready to start tiebreaker number one on Matt two. Oh man, they've, uh, they've had some issues with the clock. I tell you what, if you're a coach in the corner and that other guy is gassing over there, you are up in arms about what is going on <laughs> with the clock. Let's get it going, right? It's all about riding time in yeah. these tiebreakers. Martin's got nine seconds to his advantage right now. Now we're looking right here at, on this mat right here, mat number two. Obviously, you see um, Swan up top from Wyoming. He's putting a really good ride on Zerbin, and I'll tell you why. He's got a guy by the name of Mark Branch in his corner. Oh, look! A chance for Peterson to come back and get the fall. Flipping what was a 14 to 4 advantage for Allard. Peterson gets the fall on Matt Four. Whoa. What about that? Man. Whew. Peterson in so much trouble. There's the replay down Another there. Another look at it. Gets that good double. Right to his back. As soon as he took him down, put the old school half in and gets the fall, losing 14 to 4 at, at, at that point. Or actually, it was probably less than that 14 to 1, whatever the case may be. It was 14 to 1. He yes, got the takedown take to make down. it 14 yes. for him. Oh, my goodness. Trailed 14 to 1 at its worst. Peterson comes back and gets the fall. Wow. Was in huge trouble against Adam Allard and man, turns it all man, around. Man, man, man. Meanwhile, back on Matt two. Back on, back on. Uh, We're in the uh, the tiebreaker here, Morton yep. and Martin. Okay. Riding time up to 17 seconds now for Martin. So, Morton's got Morton's got to try to keep him down here. Just gonna see what happens here. They got they're in a dogfight over there. But I was talking earlier about uh, this match right here in front of us with uh, Zerbin and Swan. Swan rolled Zerbin that whole period. I was talking about his coach in the corner, Mark Branch, which is one of the best top riders that have ever came along in college wrestling. So, oh, he's, he's got, there's his one. There's the one. The point for a release for the escape yep. for Martin. Martin ends up winning. And he'll win it in tiebreaker two. Yep. He wins by two seconds. That's what the riding, got, riding, time, riding time came down to. So Alec Martin, the five seed, good match. narrowly moving on. Yep, really, really against good Dane match. Morton out of Cal Baptist. Man, man, I'm still this this match down here. Ooh, 14 to one. Holy moly! Unbelievable. Double leg and went to the. You know, I talking about that match. Tell some of these kids that the easiest time to put somebody to their back is when you take them down. And Hobby John, if he did not do that from a double leg to a, just an elementary half to get the fall. Mm. Man. 
And it's something that we talked about with Doug Schwab, the UNI Panthers head coach earlier this week. And he said, listen, this team title is going to come down to can you pull an upset or two, right. early, especially in these early rounds. Right. Adam Allard was in position he to in do position exactly to do that. that. Yes. And Peterson's able to flip it on him and <laughs> steal those points away. Unbelievable uh, sequence at 149. Man. McDougal and Emmer, the lone 149-pound match yep. still to wrap up. This sport is awesome. Gabe Willichell got the first round by as the seven seed, so he awaits the winner of that one. As that comes to an end, McDougal, an 11-0 win to move on to the quarterfinals later on this morning. So at 149, McDougal and Willichell in one quarterfinal. Peterson with the comeback against Allard, Oof. against Ty Waters. Jordan Williams, who had the first round by, taking on Alec Martin, who gets the tiebreaker win. We'll be talking about that Peterson match yeah. throughout this uh, throughout this tournament. And Martin sure. and Williams ought to be a really good one, too, the four and five seed in the quarterfinals at 149. Yeah, they wrestled in the duel. Um, Williams ended up getting a fall with the cradle. Uh, remember, Coach Hahn was talking about that during our call this week. So. Once again, they're trying to go, they're going to try to uh, reverse that if possible. 457 pound matches on your screen now. Yes. Top left corner, the three seed Teague Travis and Chaz Hallmark out of Cal Baptist. Matt two, Brock Mahler, the five seed out of Missouri, 13 and three. Fantastic wrestler. A little surprising for him to be the five seed, mm -hmm. taking on Caleb Dowling out of West Virginia. Matt three, the number two seed Ryder Downey and Alex Emmer out of Utah Valley. And on mat four, it is Cody Chittum, the four seed, taking on Brock Gable of Air Force. So all 157 pound matches are on the mat scrapping right now. Brooks Gable and Cody Chittum in that bottom right hand corner. Chittum with an early 3 1 lead as they just click into the second period. Mm -hmm. A little blood time here on mat number two. Getting them cleaned up. A quick look at Dowling. And back to work, 119 in the first period of that one. Chittam, the freshman from Iowa State, 12 and four on the year. His only Big 12 loss came to the two seed, Ryder Downey. You know, and that loss was in the last like five to seven seconds. Actually, Chittum was winning. Downey, Downey ended up turning him right there at the end to take that match. Good match. And that was one of the things Coach Schwab was talking about when actually you and I came and do it Oklahoma State is that uh, Downey is extremely, he's sneaky on top. He's really good in the top position. He's got a nice turn there, and that's exactly what he caught Chittum in at the end of that match when they wrestled. Chittum with a couple of takedowns here. Now a 7-1 advantage. Downey with a three-point takedown on Matt Three to jump out in front on Emmer. Emmer's doing a good job. He's trying to get height on that leg. Downey's doing a good job of staying tight. Nice sequence there. Downey working this, in on that wrist. This is where he's good, right here. Right in that position. That's his tilt. That's his move right there. All day, Couple every day. Couple of swipes and four back points for Ryder Downey, the two seed. He's got to be super strong from there, right? His, his grip has to be something special from that position. Got a little blood over here. Chit him with another takedown there. And an 8-2, excuse me, 11-2 advantage on Matt Four, bottom right corner of your screen. The escape for Gable. Chittum's just going to start racking him up right now. Right back to work he goes, and another takedown and a 14-3 advantage. Again, these early round bonus point wins can be so valuable in the overall team totals. Yes, they can. The current team standings you see rolling through on your screen, obviously still very, very early on here, but right. they will start to rack up, and the more bonus points you can tack on there, 
Northern Iowa, South Dakota State, the other two, I would say, sleeper teams that could climb their yes. way into that conversation. There's three pretty clear favorites. Iowa State and Oklahoma State look to be just about a dead heat for the team title. And then you've got Missouri, you got Missouri. just a hair behind. Missouri, 12 consecutive conference championships. Yes. So they know a thing or two about getting that done. Yes, they do. And they are the defending Big 12 champions. Watch Downing again. He's going to get right back to that tilt. Man, just elevates that far leg. Stays tight in there. Got that knee to the ceiling. Four more swipes. And an 11-0 lead for Ryder Downey as the opening period comes to a close. Yep. In complete control. Chittam. Working Gable on Matt Four, bottom right corner. And there it is. 21-14, four more swipes and a tech fall for Cody Chittam. Putting the points on the board. Putting them on the board. Couple of tighter matches here on mats one and two. Travis and Hallmark in a one nothing match. Travis with that advantage under a minute in the second period. One nothing for Brock Mahler, leading Caleb Dowling. Waning seconds of the second period. So Mahler will head to the third period with that one nothing advantage. Perilous against Caleb Dowling. Dowling will be on bottom looking for an escape to even this thing up and all right here, Mike, I'm going I'm to direct folks, uh, folks attention down here to Matt number four and Mr. Tanner Cook from South Dakota State and Jack Thompson from Northern Iowa. Watch Mr. Cook wrestle. He's going to want Thompson to take that leg. I mentioned this when they do at Oklahoma State. He's extremely crafty and good in the front headlock. I call it the high flyer. Some people call it the bicycle. Some people call it the gator bacon. There's all types of names for it, <laughs> but he's really dang. There it is right there, a little cement mixer. And I mean, he now watch him just sit on his bottom. And matter of fact, I saw a clip that he put out on social media this week. His brother, I think, became an All-American for a school and ended up winning the same way, sitting on his bottom, hit a little high flyer as well. So his brother's good in that position as, as well. I'm particularly partial to Gator Bacon. I'm, I'm, I'm a big so, fan of that. That's... All right, we're, we'll, we'll stick with Gator Bacon for the weekend then. That's what we'll call it. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, he's tough there. He's uh, in, in my notes for him, I make, uh, I say, go big or go home. Because he lives by it and he dies by it as well, right? <laughs> Gator Bacon. That's the name. Teague Travis, meanwhile, was able to get a late second period takedown to lead 4-1 in that match as they wrestle on here in the third period. 120 left on Matt two in the third period. Secured another one. Action starting to pick up just a little bit. Starting to get some bigger guys out here on these mats, man. Our first 165 pound match of the morning. Yep. Is that Thompson Cook match in the bottom right corner of your screen. And Mahler's doing a really good job right here on Matt two. Score is one to zero. He's building up that riding time right now. Travis is in on another attack, trying to look to score. Working his way out, and there's his three points right. Oh, he went from almost getting three to not getting three. Mahler, meanwhile, with that one nothing lead, 30 seconds left in the period, riding time up to 124. Rock Mahler with riding time lot. Dowling's got to do a lot of work here in these final 20 seconds. Yes, he does. That's a solid, solid ride by Mahler right there. He's going to get out of here with the, the escape for run. Dowling, but it matters not. The riding time for Mahler will carry the day. And Brock Mahler out of Missouri. An All-American a year ago. On to the second round. Yes, sir. He'll face Cody Chittum in what should be a very entertaining yes. quarterfinal match. Oh, 
right. I think. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Man, I don't know if anybody's watching match number three, but I like that sequence. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I get out, I get out here and I get excited. When I see stuff, I ooh and all as well. I am a fan. Hey, right? man. That's I am why a we fan. are all here this morning. <laughs> I am a fan, and I know you folks at home can hear me, so I hope you're a fan just like I am. Real quick, I'll <laughs> set the quarterfinals for you at 157 before we fully move on to 165. Zerbon and Hill. Hill had the bye. Mahler and Chittum in a quarterfinal. Travis and Kale Swenson of South Dakota State. Swenson had a bye. Landon Johnson with a bye for North Dakota State. He'll face, uh, face off against Ryder Downey, the two seed, who moved on. So 157's quarterfinals are set. 165 on your screen now, Matt's one through four. Hall and House Hall the three seed out of West Virginia, Peyton Hall. Top right corner, Matt two. Cooper Voorhees and Jackson Garut out of Utah Valley. Matt number three, the five seed. Gianno Petricelli of Air Force and Derek Matthews of Northern Colorado. That's the one that was just drawn to your attention. Petricelli with an early 3-0 advantage there, yep. just securing a takedown. Yep. Garut with an early 3-0 lead on Voorhees with a takedown. And on Matt Four, the number seven seed, Tanner Cook in the bottom right corner of your screen with a 1-0 lead on Jack Thompson of Northern Iowa. You got a fall working on Matt number one. And let me tell you something, that is Mr. Uh, Peyton Hall, which is the three seed. Tough, 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 nationally ranked young man at 165. This 165 in the Big 12 is pretty salty, man. Um, so here you go, Mike. We're going to do a little bit of history lesson. Cliff Fretwell, appreciate it. Um, talking about gator bacon. Yep. Right? So there was a young man by the name of Dylan Ness from Minnesota, and this, the gator bacon was his go-to. So Lee Roper and Cliff Fretwell, Roper is uh, one of the assistants for you and I, um, and Fretwell does a great job uh, running compound wrestling along with many other things. But they came up, Roper came up with that name because they couldn't figure out what Dylan Ness was doing, so they just decided to call it Gator Bake. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the two-time All-American Hardell Moore, a two-time champ here at the Big 12 back in 97 and 98, sitting to my right here on ESPN+. Plus. We appreciate y'all being with us this morning. Ooh, watch your mouth. You're trying to say I'm old, Session. <laughs> <laughs> Better watch out. Better watch out. 2007, 2008, <laughs> Big 12 champion Hardell Moore. Better watch out, man. I'm fighting work. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Tell you what, there are some guys that we'll see over the course of this weekend that are 25, 26 years old, that are in years college. six, years yeah. seven of yeah. college. They are well between the COVID years COVID and the year. Olympic red shirts. shirts and, yes. And yes, yes. You know, and then you have some that... There's some elder statesmen. Yeah, when well, you have some that have came back to wrestle for different programs, and obviously your body takes a beating, you know, obviously trying to maintain your weight and your conditioning and your grades. And, you know, so a lot of these guys that are kind of a little bit longer in the tooth, their training's probably a little bit different, right? This isn't their first time wrestling in this, in this tournament or these type of environments. So you have to... Right? You gotta you gotta use those guys a little bit different, right? You know, they don't need to be blown and going all day, every day, right? They're gonna need some rest, recoup, and, and that type of stuff, because listen, I'm not 14, 15, 16 anymore, as you well stated, but uh yeah, so <laughs> A 7-0 lead, top left corner of your screen. Now 9-0 for Peyton Hall out of West Virginia, 9-1. As Howes finally gets on the board. 4-4 on the top right corner. Cooper Voorhees and Jackson Guru on Matt 2. That was that situation right there. Once again, Gator Bacon. That's what Cook was looking for. I said he lives by it, he dies by it. And uh, Matt 4. Yep. That time he ended up getting caught, caught in it. Now a 6-2 lead for Thompson. A minute left in that third period. Thompson and UNI looking for an upset here. And obviously with somebody like Lee Roper in the corner, you know, Thompson's aware of this, right? Um, he knows what to look out for. He knows how to defend it and stay smart. You know, no need to get greedy and get a little bit of lackadaisical and end up getting you know, turn to your back, because I promise you, once he gets that, it's super duper tight, and you're not getting out to the rest slash the mat. 
Thompson, a little bit of a wild card in this tournament, replacing R.J. Weston in the field for UNI. Just four and four on the year, but here, 30 seconds away from an upset win over the seven seed, Tanner yep. And you got to think about it. Allard was just in this position not too long ago on the same mat. Yeah. Right? On the exact same mat. Obviously, score was a little bit different, but uh, Thompson's doing a good job. Looks like he's going to get out of here with that W. Five seconds left and hanging on. And Jack Thompson nice job. with the upset win of Tanner Cook and the UNI Panther. Secures his fifth win of the year and moves on to the Big 12 quarterfinals. Yep, good job by him. And now he very likely gets to face David Carr. Good luck, young man. David Carr, that dude. Man, I had a chance to talk to his dad before the tournament. We'll get more into that once uh, once David hits the mat. But there you he should goes. see him very shortly. In fact, here he comes out on to mat four. And this is uh, one of the other guys you were talking about, Mike, trying to make history this weekend, becoming a five-time Big 12 champion. Dayton Fix and David Carr. And like I said, we talked about this 165-pound weight class here at the Big 12s, but just this 165-pound weight class nationally is extremely deep. I mean, goodness gracious. It's, uh, it's going to be fun to watch at these conference tournaments. It's going to be fun to watch at NCAAs in a couple of weeks because all these young men can scrap. God almighty. Carr with a takedown. Just 20 seconds into the match. Cuts De La Pena and goes hunting for another. Everybody, of course, looking forward to the likely anyway scenario that we see Carr and Keegan O'Toole go head to head once again. Wrestled for the Big 12 championship a year ago. Carr got him here at the Big 12s. Keegan O'Toole, though, got revenge at the NCAA championship just a couple weeks later as we do welcome you here Matt side at the BOK Center. Mike Leslie, Hardell Moore here with you. Uh, about midway through the opening round, the preliminary round, as we make our way into the 165-pound weight class. What right. do you like about what you've seen so far? Man, just the the the, the energy, right? The action. And you no, know, we've had a couple of upsets. Could have had one more over there, but uh, very close. Young man came back and found a way to win that match. And just uh, getting a chance to watch these young men compete and try to, try to maintain their goals if they can. And that's just the beautiful part about it. Uh, it's, it's so hard. Wrestling is so hard, but it's so beautiful at the same time, right? It's, uh, I'm obviously biased because it's, I think it's the greatest sport around, and it teaches you so many valuable life lessons on the mat, almost more importantly, off of the mat. No doubt. Matt, too, a good place to put your attention right now. Top right corner of the screen, Cooper Voorhees with an 8-6 lead with a buck 10 left in this third period. Jackson Guru to Utah Valley. Trying to make something happen here in the first round at 165 pounds. Good stuff. Meanwhile, David Carr already with three takedowns in this opening period and 9-2 to do adv uh, nine to two advantage on Mateo De La Pena out of Cal Baptist. Bottom left corner of your screen, the five seed Gianno Petrocelli with a 4-0 lead on Derek Matthews. That one's winding down. Hunting back points right now is Petrocelli. Yeah, and Matthews, now he's 7-0 advantage. Matthews was going for broke right there. Voorhees with a big takedown and an 11-6 advantage. And then on Matt Four, David Carr making quick work of Mateo De La Pena. The fall in the first period with 53 seconds left. Voorhees with a third period takedown, 11-7 now. Something going on on one. I don't know if it's... Don't know if they're reviewing anything or not on one. Got Piccolo and Blake down there on mat number four. No score yet. Now the scoreboard on Matt 1 has been flip-flop, where so it does now. seem to show that Achardi is leading 8-1. Yeah. That, maybe that is that. We'll have to double-check on that. Yeah, we're we're in a think break right now to, on uh, Matt 1. Yeah, they're, I think they're trying to figure it out. Because Mako had the first takedown, and he's in the green ankle band. So they're going to rock, paper, scissor and get it right. The score does currently show red 8, green 1, and it is 
Mako that has, as you said, the green ankle bands on. But we do have the officials yeah, they're on at it. the table and trying to sort that out. Meanwhile, bottom left corner of your screen, Matt Three, the number five seed, Jared Sima of Northern Iowa, and Aiden Ricks McElhenney out of Northern Colorado squaring off a 5-1 advantage for Sima here late in the first period. Top right corner, the number eight seed, Brody Conley and Mahanri Rushton out of Utah Valley. Conley with a 3-1 edge late first. And just getting underway on Matt Four, Tate Piccolo out of Oklahoma, the number six seed, and Noah Blake from Air Force, still scoreless. They've had some uh, things going on with these, uh, these clocks lately. Yeah, we had some issues down on uh, Matt Four earlier on today where it seemed like there was an issue with the plug. That has been sorted out yep. and taken care of, but now down on Matt One, it would seem anyway that there are some issues. We'll, as soon as we have some clarity, they're changing the riding time, they're changing the amount of time left in the period. They have not yet changed the score, so we will keep an eye on that. Sima now with another takedown and an 8-1 lead as the first period comes to an end between he and Rick's McElhenney. Piccolo and Blake go into the second period scoreless. One point for Blake. He just escaped. Simmons is working really hard on top, man. That dude's been working up there. What's Check up? this out on Matt One. Oh, they're they're going to have bands. the two wrestlers switch the bands because yeah. they can't seem to make the clock well, cooperate. I, I, I think, <laughs> I don't know if they were able to maybe switch their names because you can do that. So, got a problem? Find a solution. There's your solution. They did also change the score to 5 to 1. So, it's 5 to 1 Mako with the advantage. Well, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Now they did just That's not the right. score. Yeah, that's, you hear the crowd. There we <laughs> Missouri go. Missouri fans right, are now, like, now wait a minute, dude. Hold on. Hold on. What are we doing here? What, what's happening? What's happening? Break it down to me, please. Uh, Achardi was ready to take the ankle bands yeah. off again and yeah, flip like, them wait back. Wait a minute. Yeah. So five to one, Peyton Mako. There we go. Out yeah. of Missouri. <laughs> the All-American a year ago, finishing eighth at the NCAAs. Uh, Runner-up at the Big 12 Championship. Yeah. Not in an 8-1 or 5-1 hole, yes, but rather yes. leading that match. And Mako with another takedown. That'll make the score eight to one for now him right now. Now it is eight yeah, to one. Yeah. Eight to two in favor of Jared Sima late in the second period. A stoppage on Matt Four. Yep. Piccolo with a three-two edge. Yep, just got a takedown. Uh, Blake came right back with an escape. All right, going into uh, Matt one right now. Here's the, the official score right now on Matt number one. It's eight to two for Mako. He has 57 seconds of riding time. There's about 20 seconds left in this second. I think, well, no, they still have first period up there. Yes, still first period. Okay, man, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a long match down there. So we will keep you up to we'll date keep on you the score down that. there. Yep. As Mako is in control, eight to two in that one. Conley leading nine to two on Matt two, and has a minute seven of riding time as they get ready to start the third period. Jared Sima starting to rack them up, an 11-2 lead on Matt three, and a tight one there on Matt four. Piccolo and Blake three to two yep. under a minute in the second period. Sim has done a really good job right here on this mat number three in the top positions. Been able to get some turns on top. Kind of expand that lead a little bit right there in that situation. Right there is where he caught him the last couple of times. Yep, there's two swipes. Got three. Got a three count there. Three more points for Jared Sima in a 14 to two advantage. Underway in the second period on Matt one, still eight to two in favor of Peyton Mako. Make it now eight three as he gives the escape. Yep. Oh, see Mako if he can get him control. in danger down there. See if he's going to put him in danger. Oh, almost. Almost had a danger call and swipes. And now 11-3 in favor of Peyton Mako.
Still 3-2, Piccolo and Blake headed to the third period on mat four. Yeah, Piccolo's choice, he's gonna go down, try to extend that lead with an escape and or a reversal here. Tate Piccolo, the junior out of Mustang, Oklahoma, fifth at the Big 12 Championships a year ago, one and two at Nationals. Yeah, he had a really good Big 12 last year. Piccolo up and out in probably about five seconds almost. Makes that score four to two. Riding time at present, not a factor on Matt Four. This is where Piccolo is really tough. He's tough to finish on. He's extremely flexible. I was talking to the guys in the truck today about this. Like he may, he may hit a full split if he needs to. Blake's doing a good job. That ankle. Yep. Good little limp knee, get that foot out of there. Plant it back on the mat. 14 to four, meanwhile, on mat one. 14-5 as Mako cut him loose again. Final 35 seconds. Mako in complete control. Sima here with the tech fall on mat number three. So the five seed Sima moving on. He'll face very likely Peyton Mako yeah. in the quarterfinals. Mako up 14-5, 15 seconds left in that one. And with the fall, Mako as well with the fall. There it is. So Peyton Mako moving on over Peter Ricciardi. Tate Piccolo and Blake, 4-2, to two, 38 seconds left in this one on Matt Four, bottom right corner of your screen. Getting through some of these 174 pounders. Ready to start getting a 184 here in just a few. We'll have a mixture of both of them on the mat, 74 and 84. Blake's got to take a shot here. 15 seconds left. Piccolo. Eight seconds and holding on. Tate Piccolo, the number six seed for the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll move on to the quarterfinals. 4-2 win there. So Piccolo will face Braden Thompson in a little bedlam action in the quarterfinals. This will be the third time that they wrestled this year. Thompson won the first one. Piccolo won the second one. And we'll see what happens this, this evening. Or Matt. a matter of fact, this next round, what am I talking about? Yeah, later on this morning. Matt yep. three, bottom left corner of your screen. Gavin Sachs and Kane short from Wyoming, the final 174-pound match yep. of this opening round. Sachs already with a three-point takedown. On Matt one, our first 184-pound match of the morning. Sachs with that takedown, got four swipes. 7-0, just like that. Sachs quickly in control. That top left corner, Ethan Duca out of Wyoming and Branson Britton from Northern Colorado. Winner moves on to face Parker Keckeisen in the quarterfinals. Keep an eye on Gavin Sachs here. I had a chance to talk to Obi Blanc, his, his head coach, um, before the tournament, just real briefly over there. Um, young man is tough. I know he's got the seventh seed here right now at this tournament, but. You know, if he gets past uh, short from Wyoming, he'll have uh, Gaten from Iowa State later on this afternoon. He's really working hard right now. I mean, it's about to be. Looking for back points zero, again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's 11-0 right now with a minute, minute 11 left in this first period. So take down two turns. Keep it rock and rolling from there. Top right corner on Matt two. Colton Hawks, the four seed out of Mizzou, and Adam Cherney from North Dakota State. About 90 seconds into that one. And on Matt four, the number six seed, Sam Wolf from Air Force, and Jacob Armstrong from Utah Valley in that bottom right corner. So one, two, and four are 184 pound matches. Five NCAA pre allocations for 184 this year for the Big 12. There it is again. Look at that. Right to that cradle. Man. That's, uh, that's good top wrestling right there. Gavin that's Sachs it. cruising here yes. in this first period. And there is four more points on the uh, near fall and a 15-0 tech fall for Gavin Sachs. One takedown. Everything else was a turn. All in the first period. 
that's what I was talking about earlier, how fast these matches can go, right? Yeah. If you got somebody that knows what they're really doing on top, get a chance to put those points on the board. And every time he got swipes, they were all four. Just heard from one of the officials. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah. I mean, Cade, so uh, quarterfinals at 174. Cade DeVos, uh, Cade DeVos rather, and uh, Brody Conley. Jared Sima and Peyton Mako in the other quarterfinal on that side of the bracket. Braden Thompson and Tate Piccolo in a little bedlam action. Yep. And then Gavin Sachs and MJ Guyton out of Iowa State in the other quarterfinal. Now fully on to 184. 184 and a little bit of mixture of 197 right here as well on, uh, on mat three with uh, the man Tanner Sloan from South Dakota State University. Record is 18 and one. He's the number one seed in this bracket. And is just, uh, he was the runner up last year at 197 pounds, going into his last Big 12 tournament and is just a solid, solid dude, man. He will grind a match out. He's tough on top. Talking to his coaches, he's got a one of those super, super good grips. Really strong kid. Solid basic fundamentals, too. Sloan and Rocky Elam, a similar story to Keegan O'Toole and David Carr. Mm. Elam got Sloan in the Big 12 championship in the finals, but then Sloan got revenge on Elam in the national semifinals. Yep. It's wrestling, man. Like I said, that's why you got to treat every match as different. Every match is different. Don't just think because you beat me once, twice, three times, ten, that you're, you're going to beat me 11. I may get one in. I may be one in 11 against you. <laughs> but I'm going to get it done. Tanner Sloan, the runner-up at the Big 12s, the runner-up and at the NCAA tournament. Sloan with an early 3-0 lead yeah, he was on looking, Xavier Vasquez. He was looking for that inside cradle on Vasquez. Vasquez was like, man, let me turn away real quick. So it's where he's good right here, man. You know, you could separate yourself. This mat wrestling is extremely, extremely key. Like I said, now, especially now, you got a chance to get two near fall, three near fall, and or four near fall from a top position. Oof. You know, we obviously just saw what Gavin Sachs just did here, you know, not five minutes ago. And that was off of one takedown. Sloan just sent one of the red ankle bands for Vasquez <laughs> flying across the mat. Got him! Go get him! Right now, attack, attack. 4 1, the advantage late second period for Ethan Duca on Branson Britton. Go! Go! Duca, the eight seed, trying to set up a matchup with Parker Kekeisen. What do you think the mentality is for one of these guys when they see the bracket pop up and, oh, hey, if I win my first round match, I get Parker in the second round. Go wrestle, right? I mean, that's the way you got to look at it. And you don't want to, you don't want to look at it any other way. You still got to go compete and go wrestle. And trust me, that's what these coaches are telling them, right? Yeah, you know, you know Kek Eisen's resume, you know who he is, so on and so forth. Like I always try to tell my, don't wrestle the name, yeah. right? Don't wrestle the name. You go out there and wrestle, worry about your performance, see what happens. And if he does beat you, he beats you, right? But you know, I got you at this university not to back down from anybody, wherever it's at. Amen. Amen, right? Top right corner of your screen, Matt Two. Colton Hawks with a 6-2 advantage on Adam Cherney out of North Dakota State. Lock it up! You got it! There's Sloan's position right there. Sloan looking for a couple swipes and four more for the number one seed in a 7-0 advantage. He's always attacking wrists, right? He's got his pressure forward, got his opponent flat on his belly. He's raking the head. Now he's working for a cradle. Short time here in this first period. Three, two, one, time. Ah! Sam Wolf of Air Force with a 10-1 advantage right now on Jacob Armstrong. Bottom right corner of your screen on Matt Four at 184 pounds. Hawks with a 9-2 lead right here on Matt Two. Minute 53 ride time going into the third period. Tanner Sloan's only loss this year came against Jackson Smith of Maryland. An 8-2 decision at the Cliff Keen Invitational. 
went 9-0 against Big 12 wrestlers this year. Looking for a 10th victory here against Vasquez. Duke and Britain, a 4-2 match. 30 That's seconds true. left in that third period on Matt One, top left corner of your screen. That's the closest match we got out here so far, Mike. And the other three are rather lopsided yes. at the moment. Britain trying to force the action here. Three more points for Colton Hawks, top right corner of your screen. A 13-2 advantage late third. Hawks has got that takedown. He's got him turfed in there now. He's going to try to push that elbow in. Bring his head to his chest if he can. Keep walking hard. Push off that right foot. Try to get him to the left. Ethan Duca able to hang on. A 4-3 win at 184 pounds. And he will move on to face Parker Kekheisen in the quarterfinals at 184. Journey with an escape, 13-3. Under a minute in the third period. Riding time is locked for Hawks. He's about to cruise his way into the quarterfinal and set up a intriguing matchup with Feldkamp of Iowa State. Yep, that'll be a good one, too. Feldkamp coming from Clarion University, was an All-American there, now wrestling for the Cyclones at 184 pounds. Those two met back on February the 25th, Feldkamp and Hawks. A 12-8 win for Colton Hawks. And that was one of the things, you know, talking to Coach Smith about obviously making that decision at 184. Whiting was there, was nationally ranked for some time. You know, Hawks was in the lineup last year, had a good Big 12 here last year at, at 184 pounds. And uh, Coach Smith had to make, a, had to make a, a big boy decision between those two great athletes. Sloan with the tech fall. And he will move on at 197 pounds. The number one seed, his 10th win in 10 tries against a Big 12 opponent. The number one seed advancing to the quarterfinals. Sloan is a machine, man. Kid wrestles super hard. Hawks, Hawks finishing up. So it's Hawks and Feldkamp, Kekeisen and Duga, the two quarterfinals in the top half of the bracket at 184. We got uh, Bennett Berge down there on mat number one. He's facing Nathan Haas from California Baptist. Berge's from South Dakota State. 15 and three for Berge, 12 and nine for Haas. Reminder, if you're a big fan of Bennett Berge or Nathan Haas, you can call up that Mat 1 feed and isolate it on ESPN Plus. You can do that with any of these four Mat feeds. As we get rolling here on Mats 1, 2, 3, and 4, we'll step aside for just a moment here on ESPN Plus. More Big 12 Wrestling Championships action in the opening round when we return. Hearing myself, Hutton. Same thing when you got a cough, push that. Yeah, I do the same thing. <laughs> got a fall right here. Got a 
another bedlam going down here with Plot. Hoos. Giuseppe Hoos. Okay. Look at you, boy, huh? Who are right? you? Huh? Who are you, dude? Huh? Shoot. There was one point huh? where you started laughing at me. I think it was when I mentioned the pigtail and I mentioned the blood round, and yeah. you're like, the heck? Yeah, dog, yeah. That's wrestling talk right there. Hey, we ain't talking about a 3-2 zone right now. Post up for the three. Let's we welcome go. you back here on the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Already Ryan Berger in firm control on that three by Dustin Plot taking down Giuseppe Hoos, bringing you back just in time just in to time. see that one come to an end. Some fireworks. His 25th win of the year to move on to the quarterfinals, where he'll face Dennis Robin out of West Virginia. Ryan Volker with the riding time advantage right now and a 16 to 2 edge on Sheeran out of Cal Baptist. Berge down there in a 3 1 match right now with the lead. Big fall right there by Dustin Plot for the Cowboys. Like Mike said, there's going to be some fireworks. There'll be some fireworks this next round. There'll be some fireworks this evening. Volker oh. finishes off the tech fall. Okay, so we, we got an interesting thing going down here on mat number one, ladies and gentlemen. Haas looking for an upset. Yep. I mean, obviously, there's still a lot of wrestling left, but... Uh, but he has the advantage he now has the with advantage the takedown. Right now. Yep. You guys see down here on this bottom ticker that we got, letting you know... Letting you know who we have on the mat, right? They'll also put the team scores down there. You see where it says current team standings. Um, you'll have who's on the mat, who's up next. That way, if there's somebody that you're looking to watch Russell, um, you'll automatically know what mat they are on. As you see there, Calvin's son, Joey Novak, coming up shortly. You'll see that continue to roll through. Mm -hmm. And very shortly, we will have our first quarterfinals yes. of the day as we roll back around to 125 pounds in the very near future here. Yep, we'll roll right into it. There won't be any breaks on that. Like I said, we may have a chance to where you got a 25-pounder wrestling and the heavyweights finishing up, you know, and actually speaking of that, you got our got two heavyweight bouts on the mats right now. Berge did get the escape there late in the second period, so they will head to the third on mat one, top left corner of your screen, tied four points apiece. Riding time not a factor at this point. Ten seconds in favor of Berge. So that match is effectively all even. Mm -hmm. Nathan Haas of Cal Baptist, 12 and 9 on the year, looking to take down the number three seed at 184 pounds. Yep. So right now, like like Mike said, we got 184 on the mat, 197 on the mat, and two heavyweight matches going right now. Berge lost to only one Big 12 wrestler this year. It was Dustin Plott yes. in SV1. Yes, it was a uh, it was a great match, back and forth. Berge really controlled the first part of the match. Plot was able to uh, secure a takedown late to take it into overtime and then ended up getting the takedown in overtime to secure the victory. Berge with a hold on that ankle. Yep, they rewarded three points there. That was a nice re-attack by Berge there. Yeah, they're going to challenge that. advantage for Bennett Berge, but a brick out on the mat. And a challenge forthcoming here yeah. from Nathan Haas and his, his Cal Baptist coaching staff. Yeah, Coach Derek Moore did a good job with that challenge, so they're going to have to go back and review that, obviously, and we'll see what happens with that car. So, a review of 
of the tank down on Matt one for Bennett Berge that would make a significant impact with a buck 12 left in that third period. Yep. Meanwhile, an early takedown here on Matt two. Top right corner of your screen, Austin Cooley and Julian Broderson at 197 pounds. And Broderson, the unseated wrestler out of Iowa State with an early 4-1 advantage. Look here on yeah. Matt one, top left corner of the replay. So this is what they're challenging. This is what Cal Baptist is challenging, right? He's sitting on his hip there, tries to rolling through, Haas tries rolling through, comes back up. Now, Bergie does have that bottom leg. That's gonna be a close one. I like the challenge, so kind of see what happens there. Now, he, he eventually ended up scoring his two points, but I, I, I understand why uh, Coach Moore from Cal Baptist doing that challenge, but. Steve Wirtz and Derek Lark still taking a look there on Matt one, trying to sort out whether that will indeed be a takedown for Bennett Berge, the number three seed. Matt two, Roderson a couple seconds away here with the riding time advantage as well, and he's gonna be able to hang on Julian Broderson with the win against Austin Cooley, and Iowa State's got themselves a first round upset as Broderson moves on to the quarterfinals where he'll face Tanner Sloan. Broderson was never in any trouble there, right? Controlled that whole match over Cooley. Ends up getting a big win for the Cyclones. Put more points on the board on the team score. Yep, they kept on that one confirms yep. Yep. the three points for Berge and an 8-4 advantage with a minute 12 left. So now Nathan Haas with a lot of work to do. And I think what solidified that call was when Berge sat him on his hip along with keeping his ankle, right? Or sat him on his hip, on his butt, along with keeping an ankle. And granted, it wasn't that long, but I think that's uh, what solidified that call for the officials. That is the final 184-pound match to sort out. Quarterfinals set, other than that, Keck Eisen and Duca, Feldkamp and Hawks from, from Missouri. Berge, a minute and five seconds away from setting up a matchup with Sam Wolf, And then it's Dennis Robin and Dustin Plott in the other quarterfinal. 197, already cruising along, only two spots yep. left to sort out there. Novak and Sun, top right corner of your screen in the first period. And we've got, as you mentioned, a couple of heavyweight matches. Yep out there as well. Serber and Mooberry, the final 197 match coming up shortly on Matt One once Haas and Berge wrap up. Haas able to score one more, 8-6. 52 seconds left, so still a one takedown match here if Nathan Haas can make something happen and pull the upset. Yep. I mean, he's in there, right? He is battling. He is battling. He's gonna cut Berge. 9-6 and go to work with 45 seconds left. Once again, like I said, we talked about this earlier with that new rule with the three-point takedown. I mean, takedown right out, take it in overtime. Riding time not a factor, only 16 seconds in favor of Berge. Yep. So a takedown for Haas could tie this thing up. Good re good attack by Berge there. Haas with 18 seconds left, trying to loosen that right knee. And a stalemate. That was a really good attack by uh, Berge there. Kind of bleeding some clock. Understanding the situation and where he's at. Seven seconds left for Haas. Shooting for a leg, but good match. Can't make anything happen, and Bennett Berge is going to hang on and move on to the quarterfinals. The final spot set at 184. Bennett Berge will face Sam Wolf at 184. Berge found a way, right? A lot of these matches, sometimes you're going to have to find a way to win the match. Even if it's not your best performance, you just got to dig down and figure out, how am I going to get my hand raised? Couple of heavyweight matches on Matt three and four. The five seed, Connor Doucette out of Oklahoma State and Chris Island from Cal Baptist. A one nothing advantage for Doucette in the third period. Buck 39 left in that third period. Island just one and nine on the year, but Doucette having a little trouble. Right. 
Got Luke Serber from Oklahoma State and Spencer Mooberry from North Dakota State down there scrapping, starting their match on mat number one. Joey Novak and Calvin Sun, top right corner of your screen, just finishing up the opening period, and Novak with a 3 0 advantage. Those are the final two 197 pound opening round matches to be sorted out. On mat four at 285. The number eight seed Kevin Zimmer and Luke Rasmussen of South Dakota State and Rasmussen about to wrap up an upset here. That does go final 7-5. Luke Rasmussen with the win over Kevin Zimmer. Serber in trouble down there with the fall. Luke Got Serber caught. in a headlock. And Spencer Mooberry with the upset of Luke Serber taking down Serber by fall in that Mooberry in that with opening the, period, and unfortunately on Matt one, we were in a break. We'll have to bring that back and show that to y'all. Mooberry with a nice headlock ends up catching Luke Serber on his back early in that first period to solidify the pin for North Dakota State. Joey Novak with the win over Calvin Sun, meanwhile, on Matt two. We will bring you the pin that happened on that one here momentarily. Yep. Spencer Mooberry with the upset of Luke Serber. That's coming your way here in just a moment when that commercial break wraps up. Matt four, we've got our first quarterfinal of the day and the number one seed at 125 go. pounds, Noah Certain out of Missouri. A tremendous wrestler, uh, 12 and two on the year. 12 and two on the uh, year. Part, 14 and two. Here's the pin here. Serber tried to go bicycle. Mooberry ends up catching him in a head and arm, ends up getting the fall there. Once, or the gator bacon, right? We talked about the yeah. gator bacon earlier, right? And that's what Serber tried to go for. And Mooberry ends up catching him in that head and arm, ends up getting the fall in the first period for North Dakota State. And Luke Serber's day ends much earlier than he expected it to. Obviously, he'll work into the wrestle backs. Yes. But Spencer Mooberry with the upset and knocks off the number seven seed, so he will face Stephen Buchanan of Oklahoma in the quarterfinal round. Quarterfinals at 197 are now set. Mooberry and Buchanan, Novak and Elam in the 3 6 matchup. Bachman and Volker, 4 5. And Tanner Sloan, the number one seed. And Julian Broderson, who pulled the upset on Austin Cooley. A pin here on Matt Two. Bastida. Younger Bastida with a good start to his Big 12 championships. The pin of Xavier Doolin. Bastida is on a mission, man. Has bumped up from 197, was an All American a couple years ago. Uh, missed the podium last year at 197. Has bumped up to heavyweight on quarterfinals in Spratly. And Strickenberger quickly going to work, and it's Strickenberger with the early takedown yep. and a 3 nothing advantage. That was off a of Spratly swing single. Strickenberger did a really good job of catching him with a nice little throw by there to secure in his three-point takedown. Strickenberger, the win over Tucker Owens out of Air Force earlier this morning. Yeah, really good match. Back and forth. Uh, was tied at one point in the time. Strickenberger ended up getting that last three-point takedown on Owens. Spratley and Strickenberger working their way outside the circle. Spratley did get the escape, a 3-1 advantage for Strickenberger. Griffin with a 1-0 lead on certain. Griffin already has pulled one upset this morning. Yep. Looking for another midway through, or still early on, I should say, in this second period. Like I said, he's pulled some this year, right? He's had some big upset wins this year. Well, just big wins. Strickenberger in early again on Spratley. Looking to Got score here. That left leg. Spratley, the number two seed out of Oklahoma State, 
Is there something to be said for the advantage of Strickenberger's already been on the mat this morning and I just mean, a little warmer? You know what I mean? You get some of those, get some of that stuff out of your system, right? Obviously, they go through a warm up before that, but I mean, still wrestling and nerves and the anxiety is still a little bit different, right? Um, you know, obviously, these guys that had buys probably had a good, good hard workout back there in the back on one of the back mats, but there's still nothing out like being out in front of the crowd and wrestling. Check out Matt Four Griffin with a hold of Noah Certain's ankle. Yep, nice little low level attack there by Griffin. Kind of in a waterfall position. Certain is tough right here. He's not going he's not going to panic much from this position. He wrestles hard from this this spot. Griffin's trying to put him in danger. Nothing yet. Nothing Officials let him be go. Official. Oh. No. Certain able to scramble back on top here. Both wrestlers Good with an action. Action. Good wrestling. We got action going everywhere. Spratley was in. Strittenberger, he's looking to score here. He's trying to reverse that. Man, back and forth action. Final 30 seconds of that first period on Matt Two, top right corner. Spratley. Strickenberger's doing a really good job here. Stra Spratley's trying to lock through the crotch and get height. Once he gets his boot in, he'll secure his three-point takedown. But there's nothing there yet because he still has that leg. I think Spratley may have a cradle, not for sure, though. Good scramble on Very Matt good two. scramble. What an opening period between the two and seven seeds and a three-point takedown right at the end of the period yeah. is going to give Spratley a 4-3 advantage. I think they're going to look at this. Yep, the officials are going to look at this. Once again, good call by the officials to say, hey, let's let's go look at this. It was a close situation, so we'll see what they come up with here on this uh, on Matt, two at 125 pounds. And right now, down here on Matt number four, Griffin with the 1-0 lead going into the third period on Certain. And Griffin did a really good job on bottom there because Certain is extremely tough on top. So this was a long scramble from this position. Matt two, top right corner. Yep, kind of go cradle. Spratley gets his hips up. Strittenberger's pushing back into him. They go back and forth. Now this is where it's coming up to where the officials are going to review. Meanwhile, on Matt four, Griffin with a hold of Noah Certain. No swipes yet. No swipes in that position. A brick is out. Coach Derek Moore threw the brick again from that position. This is a big, big, big call right here. And a stoppage with 129 as they were out of bounds. The yeah. brick is out for Cal Baptist. Already an upset this morning by Eli Griffin and looking for looking another for on another the number one. one seed, Noah Certain. And they did award the three points for Spratley here on Matt too, so they're going into the second yes. period with the score four to three for Spratley. Down here on Matt four, like Mike and I were just talking about, Griffin had what we call a side-by-side -side and or a Merkel position and was rolling Certain through, but I, the official, obviously, he did not break plane to start counting swipes, so it, We'll kind of see what happens here. So either the score is going to be, you know, 4-5-0 or 1-0. Don't know just yet. Huge, we'll have to figure it out. It's, difference it's in a, terms of what the strategy would be for Noah Certain with 89 seconds to right, work with. Right, and in the third period, right? So now that, that clock becomes your enemy right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this is a big sequence right here. Certain wrestling with that brace around his neck. And what I was mentioning about earlier before we got to the Spratley and Strickenberger position over here is Noah Certain is tough on top. For Griffin to get that escape was really, really crucial there. More scramble here on Matt, too. Even up for a piece. No near no. fall awarded down here on Matt number four. So it stays 1-0 in favor of Eli Griffin of Cal Baptist, but he is on top and looking to ride out Noah Certain, the number one seed at 125. And, and riding time is going in Griffin's advantage right now. He just went over the 30-second mark. There's a minute 15 left here in this third period. Looking for a mat return. Good mat return by Griffin. Oh, this is where Certain likes to be, though. Certain likes these positions. Certain looking for a reversal, and he's got it. That's the position he likes. 
Noah Certain with the reversal with under a minute in the third. Matt Four, bottom right corner of your screen, and the number one seed out of Missouri. They're all. Unbelievable action in the 125 pound quarterfinals. Griffin and Certain in a 2 1 bout. It is a match. It is a match down there on mat number four. Meanwhile, bottom left corner, 1-1, one, one, Gordon and Trussell with 90 seconds left at the heavyweight classification. Spratley and Strickenberger, 4-4, heading to the third period. Griffin back up, 35 seconds left here. Riding time will not be a factor nope. on mat four. Certain's got a returning, though. He's got a returning. Stall call. Oh! The turnaround by Griffin. Certain oh! oh! in real trouble. Oh! And the 3 2 advantage. So. Oh! Two more in the reversal with Certain. Six seconds in the period. Escape. Oh! <laughs> what are we. 4-4. Is it the four? escape from Griffin? It's going to be 4-4, four, four, and they'll go to overtime. <laughs> no running really time effector. What a match oh, on Matt Oh, my goodness. Four. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Noah Certain and Eli Griffin heading to sudden victory. Whoa. Two minutes on the clock on Matt Four. Matt Four is going off right now. Spratley 5-4 on Strickenberger on Matt Two. Minute left in the third period there. They hear it. We were in this position earlier. Who's going to win this scramble? This is key. Who wins this scramble? Certain and Griffin, bottom right corner. First one to score wins. Danger. They count danger. Oh, man. Griffin's Griffin got to hook the foot. He's got to hook the foot and get his knee to Certain's chest. So look at that. Nothing yet. Certain. Two for Noah Certain in the win. The three-point takedown Woo! for the number one seed. And in sudden victory, Noah Certain moves on to the semifinals. What a battle. Wow. Another look on Matt two, excuse me, on Matt four at the end of regulation between wow. Certain and Griffin. Fix with a fall. Here's this scramble here. Griffin spins into him, gets a reversal. Certain comes back up. He ends up getting a reversal. Here, I'm a little ahead of you guys. Right here, here's his reversal. Then Griffin escapes with about 10 seconds left to tie it up. Four to four. And then they go into overtime. Man. Spratley with a late takedown on Matt two. He moves on at 125, taking down Strickenberger, 8-4. Certain the number one seed survives. Fourth of July is today. <laughs> Fourth Man, of July the, the is last today. Ten minutes or so. Oh been. my goodness. High Ooh, energy. Wee. Gordon and Trussell, meanwhile, on Matt three in sudden victory now tied at one. Oh man. Okay. It Catch is non-stop at the Big 12 championships. Man. Catch our breath. I, I talked about fireworks this evening, but man, obviously I was wrong. Fireworks were right now in these uh, in the quarterfinals. Semifinals still to come tonight here on ESPN Plus. That broadcast will begin at five o'clock. But again, here on Matt three, one one, Tyrell Gordon of Northern Iowa, Chase Trussell out of Utah Valley at the heavyweight classification, looking to move on to face Zach Elam in the quarterfinals. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to keep laughing about that because that was fun. I, I got to admit, man, I'm over here grabbing Mike's wrist and pushing and pulling. He leaning on me. I tell you what, man, God, dog, that was fun. Can Gordon or Trussell get a point here in sudden victory? Mm. Mm -mm. Oof. Okay. We we'll just need a moment to catch yeah, our breath. I got to catch my breath yet, here for a minute. We've got another sudden victory <laughs> match in front of us. Twenty-one seconds left 
in sudden victory period number one, Gordon and Trussell. Matt won a 133-pound quarterfinal, Serrano and Moore. Matt two, top right corner, Frost and Leak, another 133-pound quarterfinal. Mm. And Jory Volk and Tanner Jordan, the final 125-pound quarterfinal on Matt four, bottom right corner. Well, these heavyweights been out here for a bit, man. Tiebreaker number one, now for Gordon and Trussell. And, and, and with all of that, Right, you had the match down here on mat four. You had the match right here on mat two. You had Fix getting the fall. Our heavyweights are here in sudden victory overtime. We got a... It's enough to make your head spin. Oh, brother, I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what. We got Leak here from uh, Cal Baptist trying to score on Frost, which he just secured a three-point takedown, right? That's the number two seed there. Almost had the number one seed Leak. go down here with another Cal Baptist wrestler. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys and gals are at the house, take you a deep breath, go get you a bottle of water, <laughs> popcorn, whatever you're eating. What time is it? It's lunch Just time. Just afternoon. It's lunch time, right? It's lunch time. So get you a little, little sandwich. Throw some cheese on there and keep tuning in. Right here on ESPN Plus, we're watching the Big 12 wrestling. So once again, we talked about that ticker on bottom. You see where they're talking about who's next and on what mat. Um, so like Mike mentioned earlier, any of you folks out there that want to go particularly just focus in on your favorite wrestler, you're more than welcome. But make sure you come back and listen to us. If you really want to get crafty, just keep a couple browsers open. Listen to us and watch hey. one, at the, one at a time. Yeah, we always talk about wrestling people setups, man. And I tell you what. They are some dedicated fans, that's for sure. You get four or five screens going at once. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Well, somebody's about to get thrown on their head. Gordon and Trussell in tiebreaker number two right now. Frost Frost looking for a fall. That riding time back down. Frost quickly seesaws back in front, a 6-3 advantage late in the opening period. That's on Matt 2, top right corner. 1-0 Serrano nope. with the lead. Down here on Matt 4 right here with Jordan and Volk. This is where Volk is extremely tough at, is in his top position, right? Obviously, we talked about earlier when one of these Wyoming guys was wrestling, Mark Branch is their coach. Volk is tough on top. He was tough on top last year as a true freshman. So now, you know, getting a little bit more maturity, a little bit more strength to him. Um, you know, Coach Branch has mentioned how, how much he has grown up this year. Final three seconds of riding time there for Trussell to work it back down to level, and they'll head to sudden victory period number two. Gordon and Trussell. Yep. Ride and ride. It's been a long match right here, man. Volk and Jordan, bottom right corner, still scoreless late in that second period. Riding time up to a buck 40 for yep. Jory Volk of Wyoming. This is this is where Volk's winning this match at right now. He's done a really good job on top. He's been staying extremely active. Couple of good mat returns right there for Volk. He's making Jordan work there. It's a minute of sudden victory in the second sudden victory period here on mat three. So already down to 26 seconds left. Shot by Jordan or Gordon. Man, we may, we may get 41 pounders out here by the time this match is done. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a chance here for Trussell. Is. And there it is. Whoa. The three point takedown for Trussell of Utah Valley. Chase Trussell with the upset of Tyrell Gordon in sudden victory two. And just looking at Gordon, how he's walking back, Trussell just looked like he just physically wore him out. Like you could just look at Gordon's demeanor, hands on his hips. Like that was just, that was a long match. Good job, Luke. God, good. Hey, that was, that was. 
I had to congratulate the official right there, Kevin Luper. That was a that was a marathon match, no doubt. No so doubt. So your quarterfinals at 285, Wyatt Hendrickson and Rasmussen. Everybody check Action out here on that number one. one. With with, uh, with Serrano and Moore. Serrano and Moore. Moore's your six seed. Serrano is your three seed. He's up five to three with over a minute of riding time right now. Oh. Oh. I did not. Oh. Vocal. He was in a lot of pain there for a second. Yeah. He uh. He rolled. They kind of got him in a position, a little funky position, and Jordan rolled back and kind of pushed Volk back over. I don't know if it was his ankle or his knee and kind of got caught in the mat. And you saw, if you were watching that match, just kind of how, like, Volk let go and went belly down. Another look at it coming up here on, the, on your Mat 4 screen. So, so watch this here. Volk's getting elevation right here. Watch that. Yeah, right there. It's that left leg. He's pointing at his ankle. Now, the question right here is, I think what they're talking about, if, if Volk takes an injury timeout, it's Jordan's choice to go down. I don't know if Jordan's going to go down because Volk has already got maintained over two minutes of ride time or whatever it is on him. So we'll kind of see what's going on here. And I heard you've seen Coach Hahn over there talking to him. The officials at the table trying to figure something out. Did Volk call injury time or did he just say, I, you know, ah, my ankle, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Mike, are, Mike and I are here in the middle of mat two and three, so we don't know for sure, but we'll, they'll, they'll get it figured out over there. Han was up, bouncing around the mat, fired up yeah. after that exchange. Yep, yep, yep. He certainly brings the energy. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. You know, and the thing is, fight for your athletes. Go ahead, Mike. Meanwhile, on mat one, just going final, Serrano with the 6-3 win on Moore, so he moves on to the semifinals at 133 pounds. Dominic Serrano out of Northern Colorado, a semifinalist at 133. And at 133, there are a number of classifications in the Big 12 championships where you have six NCAA pre-allocations. You get to the semifinals, you've booked your ticket. You've booked your ticket. You are exactly right. And then they'll have the uh, the wild card, wild card draws out probably hmm, later next week. They come out so early now compared to obviously what they used to. I say back in the day, I've already told Mike not to call me old, but I'm kind of <laughs> stating my age. So. Okay, so here's the deal down here on mat number four. It is, it's one to zero, so it's 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 one to zero for Volk with his riding, riding time. time yeah. Jordan's going to go down and try to escape. If he escapes, legitimately the score is tied up. If he does not escape with, within this 30 seconds, Volk wins on riding time. And this was this is where he had to had to go to try to escape. But Volk is doing once again a solid job. Couple of mat returns, keeping a foot in bounds, and just bleeding that clock with 20 seconds left. Joey Volk had the first round by as the five seed. Maybe a little more gas in the tank right now and able to hold on so far against Tanner Jordan. Jordan, eight seconds left to get free. A last second flail and a reversal. Did he get the points? No signal yet. Han's gonna throw the brick on that. He's gonna throw the brick. Nope, they're gonna go look at it. Ooh, wee. Ooh. <laughs> Tanner Jordan, as time was expiring. Ooh, wee, man. Man. Okay. Wow. So as they figure that out, here's this review right here. Volk still has a foot in. He's gonna lift, sticks that foot in. Jordan's gonna slide down. He elevates. Now watch his hips. Kind of does high hips in this position. He just jumps straight back. Like He's got nothing to lose. Yet. Push off on sprawls. his knees, jump straight back. Right here, is it two reversal or not? Now, only thing that's saving Volk right now is having that leg elevated, right? Having the leg elevated and another hand on the mat. Was Jordan in control in that position? We'll see what they say. Okay, now. Still taking a look at it on mat four. We've yep. got a review on mat three as well. And then right here in front of us on mat three, they called locked hands on Poolin. 
It was the perimeter official called it. And I think that's what they are looking at right now. So let you guys know what we have going on. We got 141 pounders on the mat. We have 125 pounders on the mat. So Matt, three and four are your 25 pounders. Um, and Matt, one and two are your 41 pounds. Yeah, 141. All eyes, though, right now on Jory Volk and Tanner Jordan and what this ruling will be on what transpired in the waning seconds. No points. The one point of riding time yep, is that it? for Jory Volk will carry the will Man, carry the final. That was close. And Jory Volk moves on to the semifinals. He will face Noah Certain, the number one seed, later on today. That was close. We've seen a couple of really good matches down on Matt Four seems to be the that's the one the man, hot I'm match telling you so what, far this morning crazy. early afternoon. So Noah Certain and Jory Volk, the first semifinal that we've seen fully set here today. Yep. Steve O pulling on the mat right now against Kyson Tarakina. Tarakina with a one nothing lead, but they've got a review going on here. You're talking about the locked hands against Poulin. Yep. Then down here on. Uh, we got down here on mat one, you got Kale Happel versus Josh Edmond of Missouri. Happel's from uh, Northern Iowa. This is the three and six seed competing against each other. Scores three to two right now for Happel. Mat number two, we got Mr. Uh, Jordan Titus versus Mr. Kale Carson. Once again, this is the six and four seed on mat number two. Like I said, you can follow your favorite wrestlers down there on the bottom of that ticker. Let you know who's on the mat now. They'll let you know who's on deck. We got Farber and I think Cardinal down there on mat four, just starting a 133 pound match. An extended review here on mat three yeah. for Jason Rivera and Jay Cox, our two officials, taking a look at Tarakina and we'll Poulin. Okay, so there was a challenge for. Okay, so apparently Nickerson won the challenge. There was not. So there's one red. Or maybe that review was on them. Maybe that they did that. Maybe the officials reviewed that. So it's 1-0 one, one Tarakina. It was a locked hands by Poulin. Early on in that second period, quarterfinal match at 125 pounds. Oh. Right there, yep, that's where he's going to award that two reversal. Once he got underneath that armpit, that's when the official awarded that reversal right there for Terrakina, which was a big reversal right there on the edge. So 3 nothing for Terrakina. Winner of this one would move on to face Troy Spratley, the two seed in the other 125-pound semifinal. Happel with a 3-2 lead, top left corner on Matt one. Late second period at 141 pounds. And as we're, as Mike and I are sitting here at this table, we got, uh, we just put the heavyweight uh, bracket up because that just finished. We got 25 out, we got 33 out, we got 41 out. We got it all. Nice drag by Terrakina there. Oh man, did score off of it, but man, that was nice. 3 1 with a minute in the second. Start of the third period, top left corner, 3-2, Happel with the lead. Yep. That's at 141 pounds. Happel the three seed. Edmund had a first round bye. Mm -hmm. Titus and Carlson is still 0-0 in the second period. Titus is getting ride time going in his direction right now. Terrakeen has got some real good movement right now. Good lateral movement. Poulin's trying to find his space, gauge his space in there. Short time here in this second period. It'll be Poulin's choice going into the third. Apple and Edmund with a good scramble, top left corner. Yep. Apple with the three-point takedown and a 7-2 advantage. Yep, just moving right along. Stayed consistent on his offense. You know, as a matter of fact, these two guys wrestled in the duel and um, they had an upset down there. Edmund beating in the duel. That was that probably about two, three weeks ago. So Happel's trying to get that one back. 
Start of the third period, bottom left corner on mat three. Tarakina with a 3-1 lead on the three seed pool. And okay, here we go. This is what they call crunch time right here, Mike. 3-2, 1.45 left. Who's going to get that takedown to try to solidify this thing and ride this thing out if you can? Pullen, a young man who went viral as an eight-year-old back in 2011 on YouTube. <laughs> it was a sensation for a little while. Everybody knew the kid's name when he was just a sprout. Yeah, man, nice high crotch there. Good defense by Pullen so far. See how Terrakina works his way out. He's doing a good job trying to get his head underneath that ankle. Yep, he's in trouble there. Oh, he's got it. Oh, good scramble on Matt three, and they're out of bounds. If Poulin was able to keep that foot in with that cradle, that would have been takedown and near fall. Yeah, out of one of the powerhouse high schools in upstate New York, Shenandoah. Happel with the win down there on mat number one. So Happel moves on at 141 pounds, the three seed. Into the semifinals, five NCAA pre-allocations at 141. 50 seconds left on mat three. We've been going a little upper body. Terrakina's got obviously got to understand, I don't think there's been any stall calls during this match. Good attack by Poulin. Good hustle. There it is. Good hustle by Poulin. The defending Big 12 champ with 30 oh, seconds good left here. Defense. Terrakina with the sprawl. Wow. Good job by Terrakina. 20 seconds left. Riding time not a factor in this one. Tyson Terrakina. 10 seconds away from taking down the defending Big 12 champ at 125 pounds. Man. Good attempt right there by Poulin. Good defense by Terrakina to get those hips back. Five seconds. Poulin's got to make something happen. Not enough time to do anything about it, and down goes the defending Big 12 champ at 125 pounds, Steve O'Poulin. Upset by Kyson Terrakina in the quarterfinals. Man. That's a big win as it relates to the team yes, totals it is. as well with Oklahoma State. Yes, it is. Getting a perhaps surprise semifinalist out of Kyson Terrakina. Nice match by Terrakina there. Really, really nice match. So Terrakina and Spratley. This should be Iowa State, not Oklahoma State. Iowa State's Kaiser Terrakeen will face Oklahoma State's Troy Spratley in the semifinals at 125 pounds. Right here, we got Carlson with the 4 2 lead over Titus. 38 seconds left on Matt 2, top right corner of your screen. And now they're saying 4 1, 4 3, 5, five three. 3. Sorting out the score here on Matt 2. 5 3 is where they put it. 38 seconds left, a one takedown match here. Can Titus, the four seed, make something happen in these waning seconds? Got the number one seed, Etchmendia, right here on Matt 3, wrestling Cole Brooks from Wyoming. Etchmendia, 16 and 4 on the year. Defeated Garrett Kuchan in the first round. 17 seconds here for Titus to make something happen. Got a hold of a leg. That was close. Trying That's desperately it. to keep yep. the action in wow. bounds. Wow. And there's the three-point takedown for Titus with five seconds in that Ooh. third period. How big was that? What a job by Jordan Titus coming back for the win in the waning seconds to move on to the semis at 141. Here's that takedown right here on Matt 2 by Titus to get the victory there on in 141 pounds. Hits a little swing single. Carlson's got a front headlock. Goes to a duck, goes to the body lock. Right, so he gets the bear hug, and then he's, he's wanting to lift, was able to keep a foot in. Carlson's doing a good job defending. Once he captures that ankle there, there's his three-point takedown. Meanwhile, bottom right corner, final minute, Farber and Cardinal on Matt 4, 133-pound quarterfinal. 1-0 right now for Cardinal. Kind of stuck in the old hip lock position. Three-point 
Fontaine down over on mat one. There was probably Jameson. no more than 10 seconds left there in that match right here. Jordan. 27 seconds on the clock in the third period. Farber and Cardinal on mat four, bottom right corner. We got a new match out here, mat number two. Martin from South Dakota State. Williams from Oklahoma State. 149-pound quarterfinal. That's the five and four seed on mat number two. Farber able to even things up 1-1 late in that third period. Oh, man, super late, right? Ten seconds left over there. Riding time not a factor, and we're heading to overtime on mat four. Farber and Cardinal. Two minutes of sudden victory on the clock. Williams with a three-point takedown. Jamison with an escape. Overtime here on mat number four. And Echemendia is just cruising along. Nine to two on mat number three. Just doing what he does. Doing what he does, man. Kid is a super-duper athlete, but dude can wrestle from all positions. Who can land a shot first, Farber or Cardinal? You talked about this mat down here, Mike. This has been the one. This Far mat, that mat number four has had drama, yeah. excitement. What else you want to say? Match after match Goodness. after match today. Cardinal won when these two met up in the regular season back in November, eight to three, but a much, much tighter match today. Yes. And Cardinal's close to scoring here, but hadn't got anything yet. He's got to elevate. Yep, that's what he's got to do. And there it There's is, a three the three-point takedown. Take and Derek Cardinal will move on to the semifinals to face Dayton Fix. 4-1 in sudden victory. Matt Four has been the hot mat. That's for Dak on shore, man. Tell you what. Echemendia with another takedown, 12 to 3, with a minute left in the second period. So semis are set at 133. Fix and Cardinal, and Dominic Serrano and Evan Frost. Take Later down on by today here on ESPN Plus. Good takedown there by Martin there against Williams. That'll tie the score up. Well, actually, that puts Martin ahead, 4 to 3. 55 seconds left into this second or first period. Sorry, beautiful double leg attack. Top left corner of your screen, 141-pound quarterfinal, late second period. Tegan Jamison with a 7-0 lead. In control against Hayden Drew. First takedown of the match, bottom right corner of your screen on Matt Four, Swiderski. Yep. His first match of the day. Yes. Taking on Logan Joffrey. And Swiderski is a goer, man. That dude, he's got a gas tank on him. He wrestled 141 pounds last year, got beat out in the blood round, but just wrestles, wrestles, wrestles. I love the way he wrestles. He goes out and lays it on the line every time. Echemendia with an 11-point advantage and the riding time as they head to the third. Riding time not locked yet, but in good shape. Right. 4-4 at the end of one, Williams and Martin. Things have kind of slowed down just a little bit. Session one of the Big 12 Wrestling Championships. Preliminary and quarterfinal rounds. Into the quarterfinals in all classifications now. Ooh, nice grand. That's Mendia, the number one seed, looking for a tech fall. And there it is. There it is. Anthony Etchemendia on to the semifinals where he'll face Jordan Titus from West Virginia. Oh, man. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Okay. I think now we may, well, there's only one 141 pound mat on here. We're getting there. They're, they're catching up, right? Things are catching up here, Mike, slowly Starting but surely. Starting to get back huh? in order. If such a thing is possible, this this is controlled chaos. This is, it is, right? I mean, that's that's really what it is. It's it's controlled chaos, and um, if you are part of the wrestling community, you definitely know that. Jameson with the win down there on mat number one, 10 0. So that sets the semifinals at 141 pounds. Jameson and Kale Happel on one side of the bracket, Etchemin Dia and Jordan Titus on the other side. Chalk at 141, the one, two, three, and four seeds moving on to the semifinals later on today here on ESPN Plus. All 149 pound matches now on your screen. Yep. In fact, we'll probably, yes, okay, all four 149 pound yep. quarterfinals. Everything's Matt's 149. One four. Yep. McDougald and Gabe Willishell getting started top left corner of your screen. Williams and Martin in a tight one late second period in Matt two, top right corner. Waters and Peterson bottom left. And Swiderski, the number one seed, and Logan Joffrey just winding down the first period bottom right. Watch Willishell wrestle down there on mat number one from Wyoming. I talked to Coach Branch about him. He is, uh, he's pretty funky, right? He, he's, I was talking to Coach Branch. He's one of those guys that you, when he's wrestling, you go, no, 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 no. Then he does something, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> right, he's got his own unique style, but it works for him, right? It works for him. Kind of situation where he's the only guy in the room who really knows yeah, what he's actually yeah, doing. Yeah, right. And you and that's what's beautiful about wrestling, right? You have some guys that can do that. And obviously there's some other people in the room that you're like, I'm not gonna teach you that, or you don't do that. Uh -huh. With a shell, you do that all day. Because that's that's what you're comfortable with. He's in on a leg here on McDougal. McDougal's a good scrambler, man. He doesn't mind people in on his legs. He knows how to defend that pretty good. Meanwhile, Jordan Williams has built up a 9-5 advantage on Matt 2, right top right corner. Yep, he's done a good job there so far, scored late. Swiderski and Joffrey's a good one here, bottom right, 3-2, as we approach the midway point of this match. Illegal there by Williams, that makes the score 9-6. They have 10-5, but that's the wrong thing. Should be 9-6. And now they are changing. There it is. Okay. Casey Swiderski of Iowa State, the number one seed at 149 pounds, but in a bit of a battle here in the quarterfinals with Logan Joffrey of Mizzou. So here's what Coach Smith and them are, 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 are throwing the brick for. They called an illegal move on that one. This is more of an official deal. Uh, look down there on Matt one. Chance here for Willishell with a head, headlock. He's got McDougal in all types of trouble right there. Four fingers already out for yep. Willishell. This is looking for the there pin, it and there is. it is. Gabe Willishell with the upset of Willie McDougal. Oh, my goodness. The Lord. Wyoming Cowboy on to the semifinals. Dangerous from all positions. Watch this. Beautiful headlock, little throw by, and then, wow, right there. Cinches that thing tight. You see the Wyoming coach is going crazy. He settles. <laughs> you know, right there, you're like a python. You don't need to rush anything, right? Take your time. End up working for that fall. It was early in the first period, so there's still a lot of nobody's like real, real sweaty just yet. Yeah. So you're keeping that grip. Mark Branch and that Wyoming Cowboys staff fired up for that one, and for good reason. Gabe Willishell with his 17th victory of the year, the upset of Willie McDougal oh, in the quarterfinals, man. and he moves on to the semis at 149 pounds. Yeah, we talked about that, Mike, just how dangerous he is from all positions, how he likes to wrestle. Williams is up nine to seven on Martin, penalty point, and then Martin just escaped. Williams had a two-point lead, but like I said, with a three-point takedown, it's anybody's ball game. Williams does have a minute five, so actually the score is 10 to seven. Um, in reality right now with 115 left in the third Williams Sweet. best win of the year was against Alec Martin and now facing him again here in these quarterfinals Yep, Swiderski with the 3-2 lead down here on mat number four 
starting to, well, yeah, 15 seconds into the third. Lighting time not a factor on that four. Mm -mm. Got Waters right here in front of us as well. Waters and Peterson. Williams and Martin in the final 40 seconds here of the third period. Williams has the riding time advantage for the moment. So this is where Williams got to be smart. Obviously, Martin's got to look like, hey, man, how am I going to get to a leg? Williams has got to understand, I don't need to put myself in any type of danger here and, you know, not get lazy anywhere. We saw a position like this earlier here on Matt 2 where somebody hit a duck, went to that bear hug, ended up scoring. Titus. It was Titus, yeah. right? It was Titus that did that. A restart here with 19 seconds left. Martin has to force the action. A couple of Oklahoma State, South Dakota State matches yep. in the top two frames of your screen. Travis and Swenson just getting started in the quarterfinals at 157, top left corner. Williams just hanging on the net return. The three-point takedown, and that'll clinch it. That was slow. Jordan Williams will move on to the semifinals. Because with that star call, that actually made the score 9-8 to eight right there. But Williams got that last takedown, made it 13-8, to eight, quote unquote 14-8 to eight with Ryan Tuck. So Jordan Williams joins Gabe Willishell in the semifinals on opposite sides of the bracket. They await their opponents. Yeah, Swiderski, that's 4-2 down there. Swiderski with the lead with about 25 seconds left. Joffrey's got Joffrey's to make something in there hustling, but he's... Got a chance here. Again, riding time not a factor down there on Matt Four. Only eight seconds to speak of. You know, and this even speaks to what Coach Smith was talking about, Joffrey, right? He hadn't had a chance to wrestle all the majority of the season, but he's right here with this guy. Four to two. Just gave up the last takedown right there at the end, but he's in. Oh, oh, oh. oh a time chance <laughs> there for Joffrey, but he runs out of time. A good Ooh. scrap from the Mizzou Tiger, but Casey Swiderski, the number one seed, <laughs> will move on to the semifinals. Man, he went big, double overs, inside out trip. I like it, man. You, you don't have nothing to lose right there. Casey Swiderski bounding his way out of the BOK Center. Oh, man. Ready for the semifinals later on tonight. Meanwhile, Waters and Peterson winding to a close. Waters in complete control. Waterson is doing a heck of a job, man. Um, he's just been controlling the pace from, from, from the first whistle. Nice job by Peterson, though. Kind of caught him relaxing and sleeping a little bit. We've already seen Peterson once today flip a 10-point plus margin around That's and right. come back and, That's and right. pull you a are, fall yeah. on uh, Adam right. Allard. So this thing's not over right. yet, but... A lot of work again for Peterson to do. Yep, 14 to 1, wasn't it? I remember that. Yeah. So now we got majority of 157s on the mat. We look down here on mat one with Travis and Swenson. This was an overtime match during the duel. We had a chance to talk to Coach Hahn about some of these matches. Obviously, Martin and Williams was a rematch. Swenson and Travis are a rematch right here. This match right here on mat two between Zerman, uh, Zerman and Heel. This was a 4-3 match at the Southern Scuffle in the semi. Zerbin won on riding time to make the score 4-3 here on map number two. Three-point takedown for Chittam on map yep. four. And he starts off well against Brock Mullen. So we got three 157-pound matches out here and one 149-pound match. Brock Mahler, an All-American a year ago, finished seventh at Nationals. Made it to the Big 12 final match a year ago at 157 pounds, but the five seed this year, a 12 and three record, missed a, a stretch of time. This Missouri program had big time issues with the flu in yes. the last two, three weeks of the season. Had a lot of guys yeah. miss time. Yeah, between the duel that they had with Northern Iowa and then Iowa State, like it was, it just it ran through their whole uh, whole program basically, and uh, you know Coach Smith was talking about how hard that was on the team. Swenson with the takedown down there takes the lead three to one with 19 seconds left in the second period, and I think it's his choice going into the third. So Teague Travis, the three seed from Oklahoma State, in a little bit of trouble at 157 pounds. It's another situation where we see 
a guy who had a first round bye in Swenson against Travis, who had to wrestle in that first round against Chaz Hallmark, and you just wonder if, if the gas tank factors at all. Yep. Swenson's doing a really good job there. So they will head to the final frame, 3-1 the advantage. Kale Swenson from South Dakota State, 15 and seven on the year. Lost to Teague Travis in the regular season. Yep, overtime match. Pretty sure this is gonna be similar. See how much Travis tries to ride and get that riding time down. He's gonna end up cutting. Like I said, that makes that score four to one right now for Swenson in his third period. Riding time under a minute and 52 seconds in that one. Okay, what we got here? Travis in on a leg. And there's the three point takedown to even things up on that one top left corner. Probably end up cutting him again, yep. 5-4 Swenson on the escape. But Teague Travis right back in this thing with a quick takedown in this third period and another shot. Look at Swenson. Oh, he's got him. That's tight. Yeah, that's tight. Swenson, four back points and looking for more. Yep. Teague Travis in big trouble on Matt one. Doesn't have him yet. Able to get loose, but, get loose, but man, he's got a, in a 12 4 advantage. He's in a hole. And right here on mat two, it's 1 to 0 for Zerbin. Kale Swenson with a terrific sequence. Yep. To take control in that quarterfinal match at 157. And now Teague Travis has got a pull off a miracle here in these last 37 seconds. This is what we talked about. A lot of these matches, obviously, like I said earlier, these, that was an overtime match. It's anybody's match. Chittam with a 4-1 lead down here on mat number four. A South Dakota State upset here in the quarterfinal round could factor in the bigger picture as the team title yep starts to come into clearer focus as this day rolls along South Dakota State one of those two along with Northern Iowa kind of sleeper teams that would have a chance to really get into that conversation and a result like this matters it helps right it helps them as a team and the team score moving forward Brock Mahler going to work on Matt Four. Here we go right here. Hill just took him down, makes the score three to one for Hill right at the end of this second period, too. Chittum with the reversal on Mahler and the takedown. A 7-1 advantage. Late second period on Matt Four. Mahler looked like he was starting to build something, yep. and Chittum turned it all right around on him. Sure did. And this is big right here for Hill on Matt, too, to finish this period on top. Obviously, only two seconds left. It's his choice going into the third period as well. Vinny Zerbin from Northern Colorado has not lost this year. 21-0 on the season. But down 3-1 as we head to the third on Matt, two, Top right corner of your screen. Number two seed Reiner Downey on the mat as well against Landon Johnson of North Dakota State. That one's 3 nothing Downey late first period. And Chittum and Mahler ready to start period number three. Chittum out in front. You in here on that. Matt three. Chittum and Mahler going into the third period. 7-1 for Chittum. Karen Thompson on Matt one. Real quick set your 149 pound semifinal. Swiderski and Williams on one side, Waters and Willishell. Willishell with the upset. Those are your semifinals at 149, 157. Winding down here on your screen, and we've got our first 165 pound quarterfinal on Matt one, top left corner, as David Carr is back on the mat for the second time. 
here in session one, an early, an early 6 1 advantage for the number two seed at 165 as he takes on Jack Thompson from Northern Iowa. Hill with the 4 1 lead, 50 seconds left here over Zerbin. And like I talked about earlier, these guys, it was 4 to 3 at the Southern Scuffle. That makes it 4 to 2. Now Zerbin's got to get to a leg and go score. If not, Jared Hill will get out of here with this win. And the, the University of Oklahoma, the coaching staff had to be, feel comfortable about his draw right here. Because he's had a chance to wrestle this guy, see what he feels like, right? And this dude is number two in the nation right now. 20 seconds left, though. Has to make something happen. Down 4-2. 15 seconds to work with for Vinny Zerbin. Yep. Hill's holding position. Zerbin has not hit a knee. Seven seconds. Now it makes it four to three. He's just going to hold position, warming. though. Yep. But it's over. Four three. The stall call matters not. And Vinny Zervin goes down in the quarterfinals. Jared Hill of Oklahoma, a 4 3 win. And like I said, that's where the coaching staff had to feel pretty comfortable about that, uh, about that draw. A big upset at 157. Good job by Jared Hill. Meanwhile, bottom right corner, Chittum, ready to wrap things up and move yeah. on to the semifinals himself. 7-3 over Brock Mahler. Time expires on Matt Four. And Cody Chittum will be opposite Jared Hill. A 7-3 final. The decision for Chittum. So Hill and Chittum on one side of the bracket. We saw Swenson pull the upset on Teague Travis. Downey and Johnson, the final 157 pound quarterfinal to sort out. All right, here we go with these 165 pounders out here, ladies and gentlemen. Got one 157 pound match left. To introduce some of these 165 pounders, some of the best in the nation right here in front of us, right here at the Big 12 Championships in Tulsa. It doesn't get much better no. than 165 pounds in the Big 12. Mike Sargent, Keegan O'Toole, David yeah. Carr, Isaac Olenek, right? We've got them all out here wrestling right now. Obviously, Peyton Hall is another one that will be out here in just a minute. O'Toole's already out early with the 3-0 lead and working hard on top on Voorhees, looking for some, some bonus points there. It'll be an upset if it's not O'Toole, O'Toole excuse me, O'Toole, Carr, Olenek, and Hall in the semifinals. We'll see if perhaps Gianno Petricelli of Air Force may have something to say about that. Mm. There's O'Toole going to work on top. No swipes yet. Trying to inch in that direction on Matt Two, top right corner. There go the swipes. Yep. Four back points to Keegan O'Toole and a seven nothing advantage. Takes a quick peek at the clock. It's going to continue to transition and maybe start trying to work for the fall. Yes. He's got that half in deep. Yep. This is what O'Toole does, man. Yeah, that's a wrap. Keegan O'Toole makes quick work of Cooper Voorhees and moves on to the semifinals at 165. The pin at 46 seconds in the first period. Downey, we talked about this earlier, right, Mike? That's his position right there. He is deadly in that top position. Eight nothing in favor of Downey. Four more back points for the UNI Panther. Mm. Meanwhile, David Carr in complete control against Thompson, top left corner. Olenek and Petricelli is an interesting one. Three to one right now for Olenek. 35 seconds left in this first period. He's got 29 seconds of ride time. Lost to Isaac Olenek, 8-1 at the Cliff Keen Invitational in Las Vegas back in December. Good job. 
174 getting started as Peyton Mako and Jared Sima take to the mat. Good shot there. It's a big sequence right here. Short period too, short time in this period. Nothing doing there in those waning seconds for Olenek and Petricelli. It'll be 3-1 heading to the second period. Downey with another takedown and an 11-0 advantage in the third. The two seed. Here's that tilt. There he goes. <laughs> He's so good there. He is so good there. Man, it's like it's like clockwork right there, Mike. Ryder Downey, just a machine on mat three. Four more, Four and there's more. the tech there's fall. The tech 15 fall for nothing. Good job, man. Ryder Downey with a quarterfinal tech fall, blanking Landon Johnson of North Dakota State and setting the semifinals at 157. Oh, that's points. Sim with a cradle two. and a takedown. They're going to have to look at that. Officials talking things through real quick. And yes, a 3 0 advantage okay, for Jared yeah. Sim. So your semis good. at 157 Hill and Shittam, Swenson and Downey. All right, I think I wonder, I wonder if they're going to look at this and see if there were any near fall on that. It was obviously three because uh, Mako was on his back. So I think now if they're going to question it, was it. Near fall, do we, do we get counts? Do we get swipes or what? That's my guess. Got Olenek still with the 3-1 lead down here on mat number four. We got Carlson right here from OU and Hall from West Virginia right here wrestling in front of us in mat three. Mako and Sima, there was no near fall, but it was a takedown. So 3 nothing to start that second period. Three-point takedown on Matt three and a three-nothing lead. Petrovili doing a really good job of riding over here on Olenek right now. He's got 49 seconds of riding time. There's 41 seconds left in this period. Olenek's been up to his feet a few times, but has not been able to get a, an escape as of lately. So Hall with the three-nothing lead on Kale Carlson. Nice top game right now by Petrovilli, man. He's really putting a ride on Olenek. Matter of fact, he's already over, he's over a minute right now. Good period there. So it'll be 3-1. Olenek leading Gianno Petricelli of Air Force as they head to the third period, but a buck 30 of riding time for Petricelli could factor in here. Petricelli going down right now. Like I said, the score says three to one. Olenek's goal is to try to get that down and com commit to his ride. We'll see what happens here. Got the very least, Olenek wants to get it down under a minute, but he'd right. love to get it deeper than that. Yeah. Got some reviews going on on a couple of matches. Uh, Matt one is a review of blood time. Matt two, yeah, I think, it looks is like a blood review. Blood time on Matt one. Okay. So we got match three and four going. Hall over Carlson. Carlson right now with the 3-0 lead. Olenek's got the riding time down under 50 seconds. Hey, 
Still in bounds with that foot, just barely. Hall got a stall call there because he wasn't able to climb the body. Like I said, it's kind of calmed down a little bit right now. It'll pick back up somewhere there. Just, just, just give it a little bit. Just give it a little bit, right? Patrick Chelly still trying desperately trying. to get loose from Isaac Olenek. Olenek with the mat return. This is a good spot. He's worked the riding time down under 15 seconds. Yep. It will not be a factor but he can't in this give match. Up, he can't afford to give up a reversal, though. And he just did. Yep. Two points for Petrocelli, and it's evened up three apiece. A potentially dangerous situation that'll stop things on mat four briefly, but it back, it's back even three all with 31 seconds left in that quarterfinal at 165 pounds. And remember, he had uh, he actually had over a minute riding time in that position. That's why I said that was a really good position for him to kind of start getting into a scramble. So Lennox got to get an escape with, what is it? 30 seconds left, but was never, never, never able to do that earlier. Able to get loose. Oh, Lennox with the point in the lead. And I don't think there's been any stall calls. 4-3, Isaac Olenek, the four seed, looking to move on to the semifinals. This is this Matt again, Matt four. All day long, man. Petricelli dancing all over the mat. <laughs> Matt four, that's where it's been, ladies and gentlemen. Four seconds left, a last ditch effort here from Petricelli, but Isaac Olenek will move on to the semifinals. A good bout down there good on Matt four once again. Like and we, it's Olenek that moves on. Like we said, zero to zero. You said earlier, Olenek beating eight to one in Vegas. That's a long time ago, right? He made his adjustments. You're right here. Hall. About to get the fall right here. Peyton Hall in a really good shape here. Peyton Hall on to the semifinals. So your semis at 165, Keegan O'Toole, Isaac Olenek, Peyton Hall, and David Carr, just as you would have expected it to right. be. You want to talk about fireworks. I know we've seen some already today, man, but man, the semifinals man. at 165 later on today is part of session two. Oh, baby. 174 pound quarterfinals on your screen now. Peyton Mako leading Jared Sima 4-3 late in the second period, midway through the second period. Cade DeVos wrestling for the first time today against Brody Conley of West Virginia and leading 4-0. The boss has had a really good season so far, number four ranked nationally at 174 pounds. It's a good, solid technique. Mako looking for the fall right here for the Missouri Tigers on mat two. Mako Man, has him exposed here. That match has kind of gone back and forth. Simmons was wrestling him well, too. Sima trying to kick loose here. In this match right here on mat three with Gatlin and uh, Sachs was one of the ones I talked about earlier in that earlier round. Look at the scramble here from Mako yeah. and Sima. Still going it. You got you got Bedlam down there round three for these two guys with uh, Tate Piccolo from the University of Oklahoma and Braden Thompson from Oklahoma State. Like I said earlier, uh, Thompson won the first match in Norman. Piccolo won the second match in Stillwater. So this is their third time to meet each other. No filling out process there. They know each other extremely well by now. Meanwhile, bottom left corner on mat three, MJ Gaetan out of Iowa State and Gavin Sachs. See those about guys. 90 seconds into that one. Yep. See how they're down there on the bottom of the bottom of the screen, talking about letting you know who's up right now. They'll obviously uh, eventually put the team scores up there. Iowa State, Iowa State with a good commanding lead. lead right now. Yeah. They'll run those throughout the whole tournament right here. 
Mako did get near fall points if you missed that, so a 10-4 advantage on Matt two as they get rolling here in the third period. Jared Sima needs to force the action here. DeVos 4-1, minute left. Top left corner on Matt one. Like we talked about, Matt four has been the mat. It has, been, it has, it has been the hot spot, man. Where else would you put a bet Golly, match? Golly, right? I'm just telling you, I mean, from 25, even the 65-pound match. Yep. Whew. Get a, get a chance to catch our breath just a little bit. Four to one down here for the Voss on Matt one. Looking to cruise into the semis at 174 pounds. She is the one seed in this bracket. Monaco with a commanding lead over Sima right now. DeVos able to just hold off Brody Conley all the way down to the finish, and Kate DeVos will move on to the semifinals. A 4-1 win. He'll await the winner of Mako and Sima. Mako, again, as you just said, in control of that one. Yep. Piccolo, the first to score. Yep. The escape in the second period did not take him long to get loose no, it did from not. Thompson. Oh, nice little sequence right there from Sa Oh, there it is, heading on. Gavin Sachs trying to make something happen here, but Gaetan able to squirrel away from it. Ooh, that was close. An escape for Sachs and a 1-0 lead. But he was looking for an awful lot more than that. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Peyton Mako and Jared Simmel winding to a close on Matt 2, and Mako out of Missouri. Moving on to the semifinals with a 10-4 win. Here comes that man at 184 on Matt one. Mr. Parker Keckheiser. Number one seed in the bracket, number one ranked 184 pounder in the nation. Going against Ethan Duca from Wyoming. And everything else is 174 on the mats from two, three, and four. 84 is getting ready to be a mat two is getting ready to go into 184. There's only one thing left on Parker Keck Eisen's to do list, and that is a national championship. Third at the NCAAs in 21 and 22, second place a year ago. The number one ranked wrestler in the country at 184 pounds, taking the mat for the first time today. The young man can wrestle. Piccolo and Thompson will head to the third in a one-nothing bout. Gaetan and Sachs with some action here on mat three, bottom left corner. That was a beautiful, beautiful double leg there. Man, that was nice by Gaetan right there. Exploded through, got his hands locked kind of right below his bottom on his hamstrings and was able to lift and explode through. Good technique right there. Another 184-pound match on your top right corner. Colton Hawks and Will Feldkamp, as Feldkamp wrestles for the first time today after an opening round bye. Yep. So Gaetan with the takedown there late in the second, and he will head to the final frame with the 3-1 advantage. In your estimation, what makes Keck Eisen so good? You know what, uh, talking to, getting a chance to really talk to Coach Schwab when uh, they came and do it at Oklahoma State, getting a chance to talk to him, you know, he can attack both sides of the body. He wrestles extremely hard from first whistle to last whistle. And, I mean, the dude is obviously, he's gotten better every year from his freshman year, obviously, until now. But he continues to learn. He's a sponge. He's a sponge. He wants to learn. He wants to get better. How can I get better? And it's those little bitty things that's going to, that's helped him get to where he's at. And like you said earlier, he's looking to try to do one thing that he hadn't done yet, and that's to win the NCAA championship title. We mentioned earlier that 
both Dayton Fix and David Carr have a chance at history looking to become the first five-time conference champions here in the Big 12. Parker Keckheisen has that opportunity before him as well, a right. three-time champ. Right. If he can win this year, he would still have a Another year of year. eligibility to yep. work with in 2025, so he could be right back here going yep. for a fifth championship himself he if sure this could. weekend goes his way. Yeah. Good start for him, a quick takedown there of Duca and a 3-0 advantage. And just the passion, right? The passion of wanting to get better and be a sponge. Bottom right corner, match yeah! four, 20 seconds left, 1-1, one, one, Piccolo and Thompson. I kind of I kind of figured this match would go this way. Um, I don't, just from watching, you know, on our screen right here, Mike, I haven't seen anybody get to a significant attack just yet or grab a leg. Um, so, you know, two escapes, one to one, we're going into overtime, they went into overtime in the last Bedlam duel. So it's going to be about who can get to a leg and get a score in this next two minutes. And obviously, if not, they're going to go to that. It was a 5-2 win for Tate Piccolo in sudden victory period number one on February the 18th. They go to sudden victory again here today on Matt Four, bottom right corner. And watching the watching the OU corner, there has to be, I think they're, I don't know if Thompson has gotten hit with a stall call yet. Um, you know, and in the, in the last battle, Thompson was winning with about 40 seconds left and got hit with another stall, stall call to tie it up. The Piccolo's good Thompson. in these positions, man. Thompson's got to try to change off and not get into a scramble. Piccolo doesn't mind these positions right here. See, he's just, he's, here's his splits. He's trying to beat the corner. Thompson's got to keep that shoulder in there. If Piccolo beats that, beats that shoulder, He's going to end up scoring. Piccolo will. This is what I was telling the guys in the truck earlier. The full split, hard to score. This is big. Nope. Nothing yet. Once again, Piccolo doesn't buy in this position. He's comfortable here. Past the midway point of sudden victory period number one. Look. What a sprawl by Piccolo to stay level. Out of bounds oh, and no restart. A good start. seconds of a sudden victory. Good start. Who's got it right now? 35 left. <laughs> These two were even at one apiece, both getting the escape. Oh, oh. Sachs just got the guy, guy tan in sudden victory. Action all There's over the place. Gavin Sachs with the upset of Gaetan. Oh. Meanwhile, Thompson. Oh. Oh. Gavin Sachs. <laughs> Welcome to Big 12 Austin, ladies and gentlemen. This is crazy. Braden Thompson with the victory with 14 seconds left in SV1. Sachs with the win over Gaetan, man. This is, Gaetan, was, he was controlling this match here. Yeah. He was controlling this match on Matt 3. Mike, I know you're trying to write it. I'm making your handwriting look cool <laughs> because I'm grabbing your right wrist. It's worth it, my man. Oh, my it's God. It's all worth it. What a sequence Whoa. there. A couple of big wins to set up a semifinal match. Watch the OU reaction. Watch the OU reaction. I mean, this was going back and forth. Matt Four again. Look, watch them. They're happy. They're sad. They're upset. They're thrilled. They, oh, dude, Matt Four again. It's Matt all day long, four. man. Can we just put all of the semifinals oh, on Matt Four gracious, tonight? Man. Let's just set it up that way. Well. Man, and I, wow. Good job for Sachs. He beat, ended up beating Gaetan in overtime. And I tell you what, it was four to zero when we start watching that far mat down there. It was four to zero. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Wow. Mm. So Thompson wins in sudden victory. Sachs upsets Gaetan in sudden victory. That's one semifinal at 174. DeVos and Mako, the other 174-pound semifinal. And that bracket is set. 184 and 197 on oh your goodness. screen right now. Man. Hey, what we say, in hey. complete control. Hey, the calm before the storm, man. It was, it was all nice, cool, calm, and collective. <laughs> and then, boom. That was outstanding. That was awesome, man. Great wrestling by these guys. I, so. And that's one thing, right? I, I, I love the 
reaction of the coaches, right? I love being this close because, like I said, it hits different, right? Yeah. It hits different from here. But these guys are fighting for I mean, this is this is hard. This is stressful for these guys, right? I mean, ah, just fun. Awesome. Good stuff. Iowa State, Oklahoma State leading the team standings right now. Still very early on, of course, in the process. But getting a little bit later as we start to set our semifinal matches. Parker Kekheisen in control, top left corner on Ethan Duca, 184-pound quarterfinal. Colton Hawks and Will Feldkamp on the top right. The lead for Hawks, 6-0 in the third period. 197 on Matt Three, Sloan and Roderson. And Sloan already Sloan. with the cradle. Leading 7-0 as it is. And there's the pin. Tanner Sloan is a machine. Sloan is a grown man. Tanner Sloan is a grown man is what he is. Mm. Tanner Sloan on to the semifinals at 197 pounds. I mean, that is just a throw my leg in and cradle you position. Hawks in control on Feldkamp on Matt two. This, this is what Coach Smith was talking about. Coach Brian Smith from Missouri was talking about during our call about making this decision, right? Yes. This will be Hawks' second time to beat Feldkamp, which has been nationally ranked, a returning All-American, has been in the top 10 all season, and this is his second time to beat him, obviously with 30 seconds left. Colton Hawks earned the spot in the Big 12 championships over Clayton Whiting, his teammate. And he's paying off that decision from head coach Brian Smith right now. 17 seconds away from a semifinal berth. Kekheisen doing what Kekheisen does. Just cruising. Yep. So Parker Kekheisen, the number one seed at 184, on to the semifinals. And he will face Colton Hawks of Missouri, a 12-2 final. He takes down Will Feldkamp of Iowa State, and that's one of your semifinals at 184 pounds. Keck Eisen and Hawks. Bennett Berge and Sam Wolf, bottom right corner of your screen, still scoreless as they start the second period. Bottom right corner on Matt Four. And then bottom left corner, 197 pound corner final. Spencer Mooberry pulled the upset on Luke Serber with the pin in the first round. Yep. Taking on Stephen Buchanan from Oklahoma. Volker and Bachman, top left corner on Matt One, 197 pound quarter final. Bachman doesn't miss the weight room at all. Strong young man. Matt Two, meanwhile, the number two seed from Oklahoma State at 184 pounds, Dustin Plott taking on Dennis Robin of West Virginia, and already a takedown in the first 15 seconds. Five NCAA pre-allocations for 184 pounds. Semi-final berth puts you in really good shape anyway to make the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it does. You know, now it's all about how can I better my seed if I can. Yeah. Right? How can I better my seed? You know, there's always something wild that happens at whether it's conference tournaments. We've seen that already this morning and or at NCAAs, right? That first round and some people's brackets that are in these drafts and these pools, that some of that bracket can get <laughs> blown up. Um, so, you know, you got to come you got to come ready to wrestle. And uh, everybody at this tournament has a resume. You know what I mean? Like everybody's good and everybody's going to give you your, your best. They're not going to back down from you. Now, sometimes you will just out wrong man some of them, right? We've seen Tanner Sloan just do that here, but uh, that's very few and far between from time to time. Dustin Plot, a pair of takedowns in the first minute on Matt two, a takedown and escape on Matt three, and Buchanan leads Mooberry 3-1. Volker and Bachman still scoreless, top left corner on Matt one. And on Matt four, Wolf with a one nothing lead on Bennett Berge, the yep. freshman. Buchanan was uh, started his college career at Wyoming, was an All-American there, came to OU last year, red-shirted last year, and obviously is there starting 197 pounder this year and also he has another year left. Plot really working hard up top over there. Oh, that was nice. That was really nice by Buchanan there. Plot looking for a fall here. 
a lot of time, too. Good job by Robin to scramble free of it. Good job by Robin to get off his back. Good footwork and movement here by Buchanan from Oklahoma, man. Good lateral movement, side to side, fake, snap, jab, step, move, bop, 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 bop. Go secure that shot. Pair of first period takedowns from Buchanan and a 6-1 advantage on Spencer Mooberry. We got with uh, another first period takedown and a 10-1 advantage. Wolf down here looking for a takedown against Berg. He secures it, makes the score 4-0 now for Wolf from Air Force Academy. Bennett Berge, the redshirt freshman, has had a fantastic season, but in some trouble with a minute and five seconds left in that one. Man. Matt Ford does it again. Goodness gracious. Ladies and gentlemen, we just want to thank you guys and gals for joining us this afternoon. After this session, there'll be a, a little break, to my knowledge, and then we'll get back to it. But uh, at 5 o'clock. Yep, we, we appreciate you guys and gals listening to us over these... Uh, over the stream and over these airways, man. Hope we're doing a good job for you. And yeah, this is fun. <laughs> 49 seconds left there on Matt Four for Bennett Berge to do something about it. And, and that sequence was big, Mike. Right? Obviously, Berge's the three seed. You mentioned it. He's had a great year. Wolf's, Wolf's a veteran, right? So now the goal right here is, hey, I want to finish this on top. I don't even want to give this guy a chance to get to his feet and take me down and tie it up. Okay. And he does. So now we got 30 seconds here. 30 seconds even to work with for Bennett Berge to get a takedown and even this thing up. Riding time, not a factor on Matt Four. And he's doing what he needs to do, right? He's got to stay to the edge. He's got to be smart. Berge's got some good attacks. But Wolf is doing a really good job here. Bleeding this clock. Sam Wolf lost to Bennett Berge on January 26th by a major decision, 8 0. And yet, in the quarterfinals, knocks off the red shirt freshman. Yep. Sam Wolf on to the semifinals for Air Force. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Plot was over here working for a bottom leg cradle. Buchanan's controlling right now. Six to two is his score. 20 seconds left in this second period. Volker and Bachman up there on that one top left corner in a much tighter match, 3-1, mid-second period. And also, we talked about the 165-pound weight class here. There's a lot of weight classes we can talk about, but this heavyweight division here as well, is uh, pretty salty, too, with Hendrickson from Air Force. Oh, your yeah. one seed. Bastida, your two seed. Um, and um, you've got four of the top 10 ranked wrestlers in the three. country, six of the yeah. top 15 in the heavyweight classification. Yeah. It yeah. is loaded. You know, and next year, right, you guys, uh, we, we see Cal Baptist here. Next year, Arizona State will be a part of the Big 12 Conference. Yeah. So that's going to be fun and exciting. Dustin Plot cruising right now, late yep. second period. Buchanan in control on Mooberry and another takedown, as I say it, to take a 10-2 advantage. Goes right to that tilt. Good chain wrestling, right? As soon as he gets the takedown, catches Mooberry's wrist and just gets that, rolls right through, right? Extending that lead. 7-2, now should be 11-2, or he got three swipes, 10-2. It was the takedown and then the four swipes, 14-2. They were 14 late to on bam, bam, bam. The takedown, yeah. You got Elam, Elam and Volker over here on mat four. Uh, Elam and Novak. Is that Novak? Novak. Volker's down there. Yeah, Volker in a tight one. 3 1 with Boston. Novak was ranked nationally this year. Obviously, I know Elam's kind of been banged up a little bit, uh, but he's out there at this conference title. Buchanan with another takedown and the take fall. Take fall for Clark. The fall for Buchanan. For Buchanan. Okay. We got another round of Bedlam right here to your left, Mike. Doucette and Heinzelman. I can give you the rundown on this one. 
So in the first one, Bedlam, uh, Doucette won. Second Bedlam, Heinzelman won. So this is their third time to get after it. Volker and Bachman, 50 seconds in the third period, top left corner of your screen on Matt one. Bachman's got to get a takedown and make something happen here. Riding time not a factor, 16 seconds in favor of Bachman. So that matters not. This is, can Bachman get a takedown or not? Yep, that's it. 40 seconds left. Couple of 285 pound matches getting underway. Heinzelman and Doucette, the one you were talking about on Matt Two, a Bedlam matchup. And Rocky Elam. Back on the mat at 285, taking on Chase Trussell, who got the sudden victory upset on Tyrell Gordon in the first round. Yep. A pair of Elams on the mat, Rocky and Zach, the two brothers. Zach at 285, bottom left corner, Rocky at 197, bottom right corner. Both in the first period and scoreless. Okay. Volker hangs on for the 4-1 win on Matt one. So Wyatt Volker will take on Tanner Sloan in the semifinals. One spot left to decide at 197 between Rocky Elam and Joey Novak of Wyoming. 0-0 zero, zero. going into that second period. They had a couple of scrambles going on over there, but no points on the board just yet. Semis at 184, set Keck, Eisen, and Hawks, Wolf, and Plot. And there's another grown man down there to your left, Wyatt Hendrickson. The number two ranked heavyweight in the country, 18 and 0 on the year. Pin and machine. Look, cradle. Locks it up. We're 15 seconds into the match. Yeah, I mean, he is. <laughs> He's he is, just right to work. He is a pinner. He's going to have to try to get his hips on top there. Yeah. Wyatt Hendrickson for a third time, rolling him over. Good fight from Rasmussen yeah, to try Rasmussen and stay alive here. Yeah. Still not quite done. Hendrickson in complete control, but. Heinzelman and Doucette, 0-0, zero, zero, 30 seconds in this first period left. Both Elams on top. 0-0 zero, zero for Rock, Rocky. Zach's got a 3-0 lead. Hendrickson getting closer. Yeah, he's working. Give Rasmussen credit. He's, he's fighting, not letting man. It I tell you what. <laughs> Hendrickson's got to get his hips on top. But Rasmussen's so long, right? Like he's trying to, he's doing a good job of actually defending him off from that position. The best you can do, because yeah. he obviously there's not a pin there just yet. So he's doing something right down there. <laughs> I mean, man, they've been in. There it there is. There it is. Hendrickson <laughs> able to finish it off. The pin at 116 of the first period. Uh, Wyatt Hendrickson, 21 and 0 now on the year. Like I said, man, he is. That, that is what he is. He is a, he's a pinner. He goes and looks for those falls, man. Does a good job at it. Second period winding down on Matt Four, bottom right corner, still scoreless. Novak and Elam. Novak not able to get free throughout the entirety of the second period. Both wrestlers look gassed as they get ready to start the third. Yeah, Elam put a really good ride on Novak right there. Obviously, that whole two minutes, and that's where Elam's really tough at. We'll see if that riding time advantage becomes a factor here or if. Okay. 
So it's Elam on bottom trying to get loose. Racked up that two minutes of riding time in the third period. This is Matt Four, bottom right corner. Oh. Elam with the escape and a 1-0 lead that feels more like 2-0 right now with the riding time where it is. Yep. Guys, see down here on mat number one, we got a few wrestlebacks that they have to get done. So they'll start bringing some of these guys out. Once all the heavies get off of the mat. Russell back at 141, Smith and Drexler. What the question? Oh, well, listen, number four, wouldn't you, wouldn't you know it? Four, the, the clock on Matt Four is acting up again. Matt Four has a mind of its own. I don't care if it's the wrestling mat or the clock, right? It's just got a mind of its own. And it started off that way with Griffin and certain in all due respect. Let's blame them. Let's do that. We'll blame them. That, that seems to work. That worked. Good. Start of the third period on Matt three. Two minutes on the clock. Elam with a 3 nothing lead on Trussell. Elam looking to continue on to the semifinals once again. Third at the Big 12 championships a year ago. In Heinzelman and Doucette's match, right, you see it's 1-0. to zero. This is where Doucette's been better than Heinzelman in the top position. Obviously, Heinzelman has had a chance to escape and hitting a little roll there and probably looking for a little reversal. So we're about to see what happens here. Oh, nope, Doucette's still in control, though. What a job by Doucette to circle back around. That was good. That was good. Nice little forward roll by Heinzelman. Doucette was able to counter that. Elam is now up. Little brother Elam, Rocky Elam, is now up 4-0 to zero down there on map four. So Elam with the escape and now the takedown on Matt Four to establish a bit of control in the 197-pound quarterfinal. Meanwhile, his brother also leading 4-0. All right, I'm going to point this out real quick. Both Elams, 4-0, and there's about they're two seconds apart as far as time uh, on, the, on the clock. <laughs> I just had to point that out. On Matt's 3 and Sorry. 4, both yeah. of them yeah. ready to move on to the yeah. semifinals. Uh, uh, Rocky Nim just went out of bounds, but just for a brief moment, right? They were right there with each other. So I'm going to keep that there. It's not going to be separated by much time. <laughs> it won't be. If they can both <laughs> hang on. I don't know. You sit in here long enough, start watching these matches, man. You just pick stuff out. Zach Elam at 285. 25 seconds away from a semifinal berth. There's that roll again by Heinzelman. He's in, he's in control here to possibly get a reversal on Doucette. And Heinzelman. he does. No signal yet. Oh, one escape. One and one. One to one. Doucette had 47 seconds of riding time. The Sooners corner was hollering for two points. They wanted they a don't reversal. Get it. Yeah, he was close to it, too. So at 285. Zach Elam on to the semifinals, a 5-0 win over Chase Trussell, and just moments later, his brother moving on as well. 5-1 the final at 197 pounds, and the Elam brothers, semifinalists. We'll see them both later on today in session number two. Those guys have been a staple in that Missouri program for a long time. Heinzelman and Doucette, 19 seconds left here in this third period. One oh, to one. We got a scramble. Can either one secure control? Eight seconds on the clock. No signal. No signal. Time expires and they will go to overtime. sudden victory. Oh, my goodness. Connor Doucette and Josh Heinzelman. A 285-pound scramble in that third period. Sudden victory to go to the semis. Doucette won 2 1 back on December the 10th in tiebreaker one. 
Got Bastida taking the mat down here on mat number four. Going against Wolfman from West Virginia. Our final 285 pound quarterfinal there in the bottom right corner of your screen. Bastida yeah. and Wolfram. Einselman and Doucette, though, in sudden victory. Mats one and three are wrestlebacks. Rhodes and Mauger at 133. Drexler in control against Smith at 141. Late in the second period. Can either Heinzelman or Doucette score here in the final minute of sudden victory one? I like what Heinzelman's doing. He's kind of changed direction, snapping him down. Really not attempting the shot, but doing enough to keep the right here. Right? This is where he's been good at. Front headlock position. Now he's trying to go right side and or left side to score on Doucette. He did get a stall call already with 40 seconds left. Oh, good, good fake right there by Bastida. Man, that was nice. Bastida with an early 3-0 lead with the takedown. Minute 10 seconds into that one. Meanwhile, 22 seconds. A leg here That's for it. Heinzelman. That's it. 15 right seconds. Yep. And there it is. The takedown for Heinzelman, and he wins it in sudden victory. Josh Heinzelman on to the semifinals. Heinzelman and Hendrickson on that side of the bracket. Good job by Heinzelman there. He kept continuing to work, setting him up, bringing him down in that front headlock, and eventually was able to get to an attack and get that leg and go secure his three-point takedown. Younger Bastida, another first period takedown, a 6-1 advantage on Wolfgram. Bastida is a, that guy puts up points, man. Oh, beautiful. Bastida again. Duck under there. Bastida looking for a pin. Younger Bastida on to the semifinals. The number two seed, now 22 and 0 on the year. And your semifinals at 285, Wyatt Hendrickson, the number one seed. Josh Heinzelman, the number four seed. Younger Bastida, the two seed. Zach Elam, the three seed. Chalk at 285 as we give you one more look at the pin from Bastida. Yep, and this all started with the little duck under right here. Mr. Rex, wow, man, that's beautiful. Right to his back. Had Wolfner in all types of trouble right there and ends up securing that fall, man. Cyclones are rolling right now. Younger Bastida on to the semifinals. The semis are set in all 10 classifications. We'll step aside for a moment. Wrestlebacks when we return here on the Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Bastida goes and puts points on the board, man. This has been an exciting round, dude.
What would you say? <laughs> no, I asked him if, Your son? If could, yeah. But he was like, he's not going to eat two, pieces, two, two and a half pieces of uh, whole pizza, is he? Golly, dude, this is... I don't recall as many times as I've been to the Big 12, just certain... There's a lot of excitement right there, dude. Yeah. We welcome you back to the BOK Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mike Leslie, Hardell Moore, the two-time Big 12 champ, two-time All-American, sitting to my right as we continue along with wrestlebacks here in session number one, top left corner of your screen, Allard and Fernow at 149 pounds. Hendrickson and Little at 125 on Matt Two, top right corner. Case Mauger with a 4-2 lead on Davin Rhodes, bottom left corner of your screen at 133. And it looks like we've got an injury stoppage on Matt Four with yeah. Cook and De La Pena. Yeah, I don't, uh, I didn't see what happened. Obviously, Cook's got a 7-5 lead right now in the first period. I think they're going to take his ankle band off. I see the frustration on his face. Yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, that is tough. I'm not sure if it looks like it's his shoulder. Shoulder, wrist, something on that right-hand side. Mm. Get healed up, young man. Another look at what happened here to Cook on the Matt Four screen. Had him on his back. Right there. Yeah, he was tapping even before that. So it might have came out. Maybe that shoulder came out. Yeah, yeah he was tapping on his own yeah, shoulder he as he went back and down to the mat. Mm. Not the day that Tanner Cook from South Dakota State wanted to have. Upset yeah. by Thompson in the first round and now the injury ends his day. Yeah, no doubt. So Haas and Armstrong square off. 184 pound wrestle back. Not a lot of wrestle backs to be had here in this opening session with right. so many first round buys. Moving guys on to the consolation round that much deeper along. However, a couple things to clean up here. Fernow with a 3-2 lead, a first period takedown of Adam Allard, at 149 pounds. Dowling and Gable just getting started at 157 on Matt three. And remember where Allard was at, man. That dude had a 14, was it 14-1 lead? Yeah. Peterson came back and got the fall right over there on the edge of the mat. Once again, on Matt four. You guys are gonna hear us say that <laughs> because a lot of action took place over there. Yeah. Just nuts. One of the most shocking results of the day because Allard was in complete control. Complete. Complete control. Um, you know, and maybe, and you know what, take that back. Maybe we should blame Allard and Peterson because they wrestled before Griffin and, uh, and Sertain on that match. You just saw the team standings roll through. Iowa State still out in front. 71 team points to this point in the, in the uh, Big 12 championships. You see your now next tab on the bottom of the screen as we round out session number one. Still a few more left to wrap up. We will be back here on the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus at 5 o'clock this evening for session number two. Semifinal matches, consolation quarterfinal matches. Session three tomorrow morning, consolation semifinals and seventh place matches here on ESPN Plus starting at noon. And then the 10 finals on ESPN2 at 7.30 tomorrow night. And Mike Cousins, Rock Harrison, yep. Quinn Kastanek will Kastanek. bring you that yep. action. And the Cyclones have had a great two rounds here. A lot of falls, some majors, you know, and that's the key. Now, you know, also in these team races is how these young men do on the backside. 
right? Because if you're trying to win a team championship, it's just not about what you're doing on the front side. Sometimes what you do on the back side is almost more important, mm. right? Because you got to you got to have those guys battle through. And trust me, every team that's in the running for this Big 12 title is they're they, they're going to preach that to these kids, right? During this little downtime that they're got, hey, you got to got to pick your dauber up and get back to work because it don't get any easier. For now, working on some back points on Adam Allard. Couple swipes and four more points on the board. He's holding four. For now, still has the, he still has the hold, so that's why the official has not awarded those four points yet. Once he lets go of everything, right, right, like, right. Now. We'll start putting that four points on the board. There it is. So a seven Man. to two advantage for Fernow as they head to the final period on mat number one. Hendrickson and Lilly on mat number two, third period, a one nothing lead for Yusuf Lilly. Hendrickson just nodding that up at one apiece with the escape. Dowling and Gable on mat three. Dowling with a quick start here. In this first period, a couple takedowns and a 6-1 advantage and already over a minute of riding time. Yeah, I'm in complete control right now. Ten seconds left here in this first period. Oh, Allard trying to get him a couple swipes. Got a little high. I'm going to get reversed. Man, that's got to be tough right there, right? 14-1, first round. Give up, a give up a loss, give up a pin. Come back here. Score was three to two at one point in time. Now it's seven to, or nine to two. This sport will humble you, quick, fast, and in a hurry, as I like to say. Over two minutes of riding time for Fernal. He is in very good shape on mat one to move on. And to your point, th these wrestlebacks matter. They matter in the team totals. They, they matter in terms of who gets. A, a birth in the NCAA right. tournament. You right. can wrestle your way into one of those five or six allocations. Yep, you sure can, right? They all matter. Just because you're on that backside, it's almost just as important, like I mentioned earlier, as being on the front side. Because, you know, Aller's looking for a defensive fall down there. Almost. Um, you know, and there's going to be some dog fights on this backside come this next session at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. right? There's not going to be anything that's going to be given to anybody because all these guys are fighting for the same thing. And there's no guarantee, regardless of who you are, if you're going to get a wild card. You know, right? You don't want to put that in anybody's hands. You want to go out and control that and make it your own destiny. Hendrickson and Lilly knotted up at one apiece coming to the end of period number three uh, so we will see sudden victory on mat number two top right corner of your screen dowling in control in the second period on mat number three for now 15 seconds away from a decisive win on mat number one he really has controlled that match down there Got those swipes and just kind of widen the gap, man. Put him in the driver's seat for sure. So for now, moving on at 149 pounds on the back side of the bracket. Hendrickson and Lilly, sudden victory, top right corner of your screen on mat number two. Lilly's in on that shot. Hendrickson draped over the top in a waterfall position. First one to score here in sudden victory moves on. You got my ankles, I got yours. Ooh, nice attack right there. Oh. One minute left in sudden victory. Got Haas and Armstrong on the mat. Was that one to one, one eleven left down there in the third period? Riding time's not a factor. Yeah. 
Hendrickson able to scramble away here yeah. on mat number two. 30 seconds left. Henderson, but Lilly able to answer right back. Short time. Five seconds. Three, two, one, oh, man. And there's there the takedown for left Lilly on that clock. with yep. one second. One second left. And you see Lilly moving on. Yep. At 125 pounds on the back side of the bracket, he takes down Hendrickson. One second left on that clock right there. You talked about it earlier today, late in periods, late in matches, being able to make something happen. It's what can tilt the balance from a team perspective. It's what can make the decisive, uh, it's what can make the decision as far as who's gonna go to the NCAA tournament. There's a lot of right. things that can happen in those those waning seconds when you're, you're gassed to the max, <laughs> yeah. and yet there's still so much on the line. Exactly, and that's what makes, uh, you know, these conference tournaments so big. Every situation is important. You know, and, and, and don't take anything for granted. Like we talked to, like we've been talking about. You gotta earn everything. Nobody's gonna give you anything. You gotta go earn it. So Lily will wrestle tonight as part of session number two. Gordon's taking the mat on mat four. He was upset that first round. Dowling with the tech fall on mat three. He'll advance at 157. Achardi and Rick McElhenney just getting started on mat number two. Top right corner of your screen, Cooley and Vasquez.